to happen again? I didn't think so. <laughs> right? I mean, my thing is this. And this is one of this right. is one of the main reasons why I lost my intrigue outside of like the initial thing. And that's mm-hmm. the fact that you have Zayat go through this whole transformation of just being, you know, not not worth a damn at certain points to now being like some person who's supposed to be some intimidating force. And when she comes back, you basically just throw jobbers Ooh. at her. And yeah. it's like, yeah. And that, that that's strike one. Strike two is you actually let her have matches with these jobbers. Like it should be a one and done where you come in, hit a move real quick. And then that's Game it. Over. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for, Casey Catanzaro and um, Kaden. Wow, and Kaden Carter coming out and actually f- building up on this story, they they would have they would have lost me completely at this point. But that's where my entry kind of came back into play because it's like mm. uh, Kaden Carter had went to um, Tian Sha. Is that mm-hmm. I don't know. How, I don't know. How yeah. To but that thing is how you say it. Uh, she went to her and she's like, you know, what are you doing to her? You know, why she's not? This is not hers. Not. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, then, looks like we actually may have something now. And the way that Zia Lee had reacted to her when she grabbed Boa, I was like, huh. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, now it's time to see what happens because with her going crazy and like kicking. Um, Catanzaro and then taking out Caden Carter was like, oh, okay, all right. Well, now we could probably start getting her some legit competition for you know for the moment, and then have her build up. But I just don't, I just don't like the jobber situation unless it was like going to be like a one and done, where yeah, pop a pop a finishing move or whatever, and then be out of there. But Scoot, they they, they got you. So I mean, oh what's, yeah, oh what's, yeah, they what's, had what's your intrigue on it. Um. One, of course, to figure out who TN Shot is going to be revealed as. Um, and two, I mean, if you look at NXT as a whole, they haven't did anything like that story story related wise. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's the first time they ever did something where, you know, they kind of did it with Legato del Fantasma when, uh, when Raul and Joaquin were kidnapped, but they didn't, you know, show nothing else, you know, in this case, you know, they were showing what they were going through as they were away from NXT, which once again, there was never no regal, like, where the hell are they? Yeah. Like, am I going to ever see these people again? <laughs> like, but we keep getting video footage of them beating the shit out of each other. So obviously they're alive, but <laughs> where? Like, <laughs> like, there was never no, hey, we need to call the police. Two of my superstars are getting tortured. And they keep sending us video footage. But besides all of that, I digress. But uh, yeah, I'm hooked. I just want to see what the payoff is. It a payoff? Is Could it lead to a title shot from Zaya? Could it lead to a championship? Who knows? I mean, let's face it. Did we ever think at the time um, Tommaso Ciampa was going to win the title? Uh, it's true. Because he did randomly win it from Alistair Black on TV. So it could be a situation where Zaya could be fighting insert name and boom, it's like, oh shit. That just happened. You know, so hey, we need to see where it leads to. That that's that's kind that's kind of bought me on on that on on that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Especially throwing, throwing Tommaso Champ into the mix and being like, okay, it's almost akin to you know his whole black heart uh, mm-hmm. days so black heart shotzi <laughs> <laughs> not that black heart oh. oh i don't care anymore no i'm kidding. although that 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 was the next match but there was some stuff Ooh. in between that there was some <laughs> in between that. <laughs> this was this was some hilarious shit <laughs> uh like next Next segment was Johnny Gargano being wheeled out 
in a wheelchair <laughs> with a sling in his arm. Up, and as he described, due to his vicious beating that he received by Kushida, <laughs> he now had a broken arm and, and was unable to walk because of said broken arm. Hilarity. This they, hilarity. they carried his wheelchair into the ring for him and put him on the top rope <laughs> and then put him back into said wheelchair <laughs> in the middle of the ring. Now, with 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 this shit this is this is one of the main reasons why i say that the main roster needs to kind of take from uh NXT yes with the main roster always rehashing shit it 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 feels rehashed and it feels stale when you have situations like this where Johnny's being like a chicken shit hill and yes. actually weaseling his way to get out of things like that stuff that they did back in the day and thank you i grew up with that like yeah and he's making it fresh so like when i see shit like that i'm like oh i remember when such and such did this shit before too and then you know now that you know you can tell that that johnny in himself is you know outside of being a wrestler is a huge wrestling fan you know so and he understands what what comedic shit can get over and what is actually just cheesy and he found a way to blend the cheesy with like the gold that is like the shit of the past and make yes. it work. And this is one of those things where we all know Johnny can go in the fucking ring. Like that's, that's, that's very apparent, but now it's one of the situations where it's like, well, that, this is how you build Kushida. And it's like the, because, and I, and I, I can tell you now, there's a lot of people that I, that I see that don't know who Kushida is and don't care. So you have a lot of people that will look at this situation and say, oh, well, I don't know if that guy's any good. I know Johnny Gargano. I may not like him, but I mean, clearly that's who's winning. And this was a way to build up Kushida as well to say, okay, well, that's an imposing force. I don't know. Why is Johnny scared to fight him? Well, now you see why. It's fucking Kushida. Yeah. But I mean, in the, uh, in, in, the, in the visual of Regal coming out, and this is the one time where WWE's frantic camera work was pretty good. Because he'll go to Regal, go to the way, and then next thing you know, Kushida's just standing there like... And then he was like, look, you can either forfeit the title or you can have Austin Theory defended for you. And then he was like, well, wait, wait, wait. Well, let's ask Kushida himself. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, Kushida? He's not here. <laughs> he's just literally he, standing there like... <laughs> When he was like, Kushida-san, what do you think? I was like, why, why are you asking Kushida? Oh, shit, Kushida's in the ring. Even theory turns even theory turns to him like, yeah. Oh, like, shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that old comedic trope that, that just works yes. so well. And that's why I like it because it's like the, the way is winning me over even more. And I, it's mainly because of of Johnny and Austin's like relationship because I mean again mm. Austin went from being like you know the hey I, I I look good this is you know all day Austin theory to being like that mm -hmm. traditional like just like meathead that had like no brains at all and right and and he, and he plays it so well and it's of course again somebody who can actually go in the ring but complete buffoon at some at certain points and. This was another another thing that I liked because of the fact that you had. Oh wait, no, that, that was later on. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm meshing the fucking stories because I'm I forgot that yeah. we had a match later on. So mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 like that was such a long like bit though that yeah it really kind of like had to they had to remind me oh yeah, Candice Ray's got a match like right now. Mm -hmm. But I, and that that's what I like about about Johnny is that he's able to play off of Regal as well too, especially when they brought up the X Ray and he was like, you know, right? what, is, what is the what is the it's like, it's like, well, he's like, it got got broken in four places, and you know, it's because the R because the R stands for real, right? <laughs> And it was like, fam, that's not even the that's not even the correct arm that uh, you're I love even showing. <laughs> oh, and that again, man. You like even if this wasn't for a fucking title, I'd I'd, I'd still like be down with this whole situation. Yeah. Man. 
again, titles on the line, and they are definitely building up the, the North American title picture, which, I mean, we'll, of course, we'll still get into that later on with the other match that had happened. Mm-hmm. But with uh, with this match, after this shit went down, you had Shotzi and Ember enter into the fray. Oh, uh, inbound on said tank with uh, both Ember and Shotzi mm-hmm. riding on the tank. Shotzi didn't shoot anybody this time, but, you know. I they, thought she was going to shoot Austin and his theories. <laughs> Not that I think I think they had too many guns to bring into the ring. So they, they said they said, fuck the cannon. But th- this match, this match was was good and eh at the same time and that's mainly because the uh the the sore spot in this match was indie and i hate i hate that because i want the way to look strong overall but indie is still still either missing some points or i mean maybe it's just me maybe it's the way i saw it but i just i felt like there was just there was nothing that that was that that said to me, yo, this is she she deserves the uh the nickname indie wrestling. And I felt like that that may have hurt her a little bit because it's it's us expecting a lot now of thinking I can about see that. even even with like the 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 the, the cliche of the uh, of the nicknames. <clears throat> but yeah, she just she just seems out of place at certain points. And this and this also tells me why she wasn't inside the uh the war games match and just uh, yeah. uh, a component to it rather than being a competitor inside it because she's just not ready yet and i and may, maybe she's with the way to to cover up her her greenness in a sense but yeah i just it, it i can see that yeah it just it, it it didn't do much for me and i and i hate that because i do like indy like she has she has a good look like especially with with her height and everything, like mm-hmm. I feel like she can be something. It's just that she's not there yet. But y'all's thoughts on uh, on this match? Uh, it was pretty solid. I mean, it was one of the things to where since uh, Raquel and uh, Dakota, hey Raquel, since they <laughs> was already going to the finals, I mean, it kind of made sense that Amber and Shotzi were going to be their opposition. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but other than that, it was pretty solid. I had no issues. <laughs> I mean, Shasi was looking good. I don't know if uh, Jaeger is on yet, but I'm pretty sure he would probably have things to say about Miss Blackheart. But no, uh, no, you don't. You don't need to tell me that she looked good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on time. <laughs> well, of course. Um, Sorry, little visual. Shotzi and Ember go over. I mean, that's no surprise. We pretty much called these these this whole tournament mm-hmm. for the most part, and. After that, they did the cliche, go up to the trophy, and the your competitors are going to come right out. And right. sure enough, they did. Raquel and Dakota came out, and they basically set up that 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 cliche image of who, who's mm-hmm. going to win. This is your finals match. So, yeah, I of course, everything stands. I still think uh, Raquel and Dakota are going over. No surprise. And they gonna win there those tag go. titles, baby. As as they should. As and then get sent to the main roster. I mean, what? <laughs> no, no. That I, I think, and what I think is gonna happen is I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna take those titles, and those titles are gonna stay on NXT for a bit. Yeah, Regal yes. kind of dropped the hint there when he when he exclusively said, "Oh, by the way." <laughs> The whole purpose of winning this thing, it will get you a shot at the WWE Women's Tag Team title. No. Yeah. And it, 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 it needs to stay over there because I think what's going to happen is they're going to basically build the Women's Tag Division through NXT. And I think that's probably the best move because you'll get, you'll, get, you'll get the better matches and, and obviously you'll get the more solid matches as far as on a tag team aspect. So, <clears throat> fuck yeah. Pull the trigger on that shit. Trips, get those mm-hmm. belts. Get those belts and leave them on NXT for a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, uh, for, for, for a while. Let's, a long, let's do that. Long ass while. <laughs> Trying to see what, what else was next. Uh, um, 
Austin Theory and Kushida's match? Yeah. Okay, I was making sure there wasn't any like any any segments in between that because this so, oh, so, yeah. so much shit going on. I'm like it was a lot. <laughs> but um yeah, that match this actually goes into exactly what I was talking about with I mean th- this match clearly was a was a nothing match outside of the theatrics and mm. that's what I'm going to focus on because that's one of the main things that um that happened was uh during during this match with Kushida you had another potential competitor for the North American Championship integrate himself into the fray and uh, uh. is Mr. Dexter Loomis Mm-hmm. And just the way that Loomis looked at Kushida when Kushida grabbed the belt and rose above his head, like he 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 stared a complete icy cold stare into the uh, the heart of Kushida. Mm-hmm. Like why like why are you touching my my uh, future property, sir? <laughs> but but yeah, I um. He I has nailed that. that stare, though. He has, man. Like, it's a uh, like. Man, it's kind of yeah. like what you said, uh, Jaeger. Is like how you've been saying it. It's that cop that now turned loose. Like, like <laughs> the dude that just is like itching to beat the shit out of somebody, <laughs> and like he he wants that to be Kushida right now. <laughs> I'm like, hey, some, like, somebody's ah. mm-hmm. <laughs> like somebody's catching an ass woman. It's about to be you, Kushida. <laughs> If he wins, I mean, if he does, I mean, yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, I love, I love that way that they're that they're building everything because it's like, okay, this is even if this match is a one and done for the most part, you have somebody in the blind spot right now, just waiting in the wings, mm-hmm. and right. that uh, that kind of goes into someone else who actually is technically also in the fray of things because, of course. <laughs> All of you know that uh, the stock market has been one of the main things that's been going on primarily okay. recently, and it's been like the craze. And there, there's a phrase when okay. something is going to uh, raise in the stocks and be basically a huge get or a huge money bag in certain cases. And if it's something that's uh, that pulled as you know, GameStop, <laughs> it would uh, go to the moon. And ever since I heard that phrase, the one person I kept thinking about when I heard that phrase was Cameron Grimes. Yes. And on this episode of NXT, a nice Lambo pulled up. Didn't know who it was. I was surprised for a second. I was like, who the fuck is coming out with a Lambo? And this is why this situation was perfect for him. Because when that Lambo pulled up, there is I can guarantee there was not one person <laughs> Who assumed that it was going to be Cameron Grimes coming out of that Lambo? And sure enough, saw them cowboy boots. Then it panned up. And you saw that hairy stomach, that hairy chest, <laughs> that beard, that face, that top hat. And Mr. To the Moon himself has returned. And which, by the way, I didn't realize until he said it that he was actually gone for two fucking months. Yeah. Damn! After he after he had uh, lost to uh, Thatcher, he disappeared. Yeah, it just it didn't feel like that was so. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it literally felt like it could have been like a month ago. It did not feel like it was two months. That's crazy. But now, of course, I'm sitting here like, it, well, it wasn't exactly you know two months in WWE's case. It was like the end of December, mm-hmm. and so he was really gone all of January. Yeah. And so it yeah. wasn't exactly two months. It was like, <laughs> well, you know, let's go with a month and a half or whatever. But whatever. Yeah. Now, when when I noticed this new gimmick, I'm sitting there like, "Yo, where the fuck did did Grimes get all this money from? Like, has he always had this money? Did something did this- he get a lick?" <laughs> and as he got into the ring, it started to click to me. I said to myself before I even said it, I was like, "Yo, are they about to capitalize on this whole stock market shit? This whole to the moon shit." <laughs> And, and they did, and they and I'm and I'm glad they did because it was the, it was the perfect person to do it. Like this is again right place, right time, perfect person that should align perfectly for him. And 
the thing about it was he cut that promo and he said, I was away and I got into this thing, you know, this video games for a little bit. And I, and I played all the video games I could play. And then when I was out of playing video games, I went to get more. And I went to a place I stumbled upon called GameStop. And I was like, no, you're not going to do this. He, he, he fucking did it. <laughs> and sure enough. He used it to his advantage. And you know what? I think that's the that's the best way to do it. This could technically be your, your modern day million dollar man. Um, not necessarily to that at full extent, but I think this is the perfect person to do it because of the fact that no pun intended, Grimes looks grimy. He doesn't like the person yes. that would be the type of person that would have buckets and buckets yeah. of money. So and he actually is acting like a person who would act if they had this amount of money just out of nowhere. If they didn't know how, you know, how to spend money or how to have this amount of money, that's the that's the one way somebody would act like that. Completely mm -hmm. over their head, over the top, and over the moon in certain cases, Mr. Grimes. But <laughs> this had me dying. I mean, not only because of the game stuff and dogecoin apparently <laughs> and he called but, it dogecoin. that's crazy yeah <laughs> yeah but if you look i mean i don't know if y'all play stocks but if uh mm -hmm. you look at the stocks right now let's see your GameStop peaked at 347 dollars mm -hmm. january 27th since then it has gone down to 5240 yeah it was yeah it was 70 a few days ago so yeah yeah Dogecoin, when I bought into it last week, was at four cents a that's share. How I, that's how much I got mine for, and now it's at seven. it's at seven seven cents a share. And I, I I just I just really want him to hold on to the Dogecoin stock just so it can <laughs> go to the moon. If he can just keep shooting, like just keep just keep running promos about Dogecoin. Just keep it alive, man, because it, it's get it's getting up there. Once it hits a dime, I might sell a few, but we'll see. <laughs> hey, um, I'm gonna give y'all a quick update since I am watching uh -oh. SmackDown live. Uh -oh. uh, we predicted that on the SmackDown side, it's gonna be an elimination chamber to determine Roman Reigns' number one contender. Yeah. The only downside is whoever wins that elimination chamber fights Roman Reigns that night. That night. Wait, what? Yeah. Uh, whoever wins no. the SmackDown, whoever wins the SmackDown Elimination Chamber fights Roman Reigns that night. And uh Adam Pierce said, Well, two people well, he's gonna have qualifying matches, and two people don't need to qualify, they're gonna automatically be in there. And one of them is Kevin Owens, of course, mm -hmm. and the other one is Jay Uso. Oh, Okay. So Jay Uso and KO are automatically in the chamber. We need four more competitors. See, okay, and I know that this is completely what, side. Where does drop the ball? But th this this is why there's such a disconnect between SmackDown and Raw, and that's the fact that on Raw you had no qualifying matches. They just oh okay cool. You you all are in. You all are previous champs. You get to go in. And on SmackDown, it's like you do the majority of the competitors have to qualify and then you just enter two other people, which it would make sense for Jey Uso because, you know, you can have Paul pull some strings like, OK, he's in. But. Yeah, man, this whole Raw, Raw, Raw is so fuck, I mean, Raw and SmackDown are, are weird in, in, in their respective rights. But yeah, man. I, I, I miss. I do miss the old days of when there was an elimination chamber. You had to qualify, regardless of what your status was. You had to qualify. Which um, was, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, go on. I don't want you to finish your thought. <laughs> no, it, I mean it was just like one of those things where it's like it made like weekly television watchable because it's like you wanted to know who was going to make it into the chamber rather than just oh you're going to tell me now. All right, cool. I, I don't have to watch the build up then. But wait, it, so do we have everybody listed? For Raw, yeah. For SmackDown, no. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. From what I'm understanding, that uh, I'm just I just pulled up an article about this because 
fucking already guaranteeing two spots to guys. But we have the potential to have the oldest elimination chamber. As in like average age of wrestlers participating. Oh, because everybody's age. Let's see here. We well, got AJ at uh, forty three. Another quick Go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna list off like, say, all these old people pin. that are doing this, but yeah, go for it. Another, another, another quick pin to go back to that future stars thing. That was one of the things they talked about. If you look at the mm-hmm. quote unquote top talent, everybody is in their forties or late thirties. Yeah, nobody is in their twenties. That's a top talent. So that's a quick pin to come later, but yeah. See, and this would be the way to actually build talent is to throw them in a list uh, one elimination chamber, but also have qualifying matches where you actually showcase them better mm. and then have them have a good showing in an elimination chamber match. But you know, again, who am I? Oh, I was just looking at um Drew McIntyre's chamber match, that's what it was. But yeah, Drew McIntyre's chamber match is actually going to be the oldest one. With AJ at 43, Jeff Hardy at 43, Sheamus at 43, then Randy Orton and The Miz at 40 apiece, and Drew McIntyre himself being 35. Hmm. The average age of this group is 41.2 years old. (laughs) See? Do with do with it as you will, but yeah, I I completely agree. We don't have enough young top men right now. <laughs> hmm. Giggity. But that being said, we also don't have a huge amount of top men right now that are well. They definitely have more than WWE, but AEW, like yeah. some of their top guys are a little, getting a little up there. True, and I but at the same time with them. It's like you can tell there's they're at the same time they're they're having people that's that's established to help build the foundation and then building the younger talent up on the way to basically okay, you know what? Once we're gone, very much gonna, you know very true. You don't get that with uh with the main rush of WWE. NXT is like completely just like for the most part, all young guys are all indie guys. So yeah, Do you think that might be WWE's method from now on? Keep all the young guys on NXT for about five years, let them get a little older, and that that could be the case. Um, but at the same time, it would be better if they if they were to go that route. If that's the way that they're going about it, their their execution on it once they go to the main roster is what's shit because you don't build off of what they built during nxt you basically bring them in as if they're like a fresh face and nobody has any recollection of nxt which is what sucks because especially if you were going to use that as a platform to help build your younger talent for the main roster then you should allow the storylines to translate and be something that is adapted or transitioned to over into the main roster so that way because it's it's a it's like it's almost like a cheat code because Thinking about the old days where you had Edge or um, or, or Gangrel or uh, Ken Shamrock, when you, before you brought people in, you always had like these promos or these vignettes, like, oh, this person's coming or this person's coming. Well, you have a huge fucking promo and vignette in NXT, which is their whole fucking catalog of matches and showcases and everything. Yeah. There you go. Like, you don't have to rebuild somebody if you've already built them up and established them here. So... Yeah, it's just the way that they're doing it is completely wrong because they could technically be the best at it at this point if they wanted to. But again, just like Scoot said, VKM is so fucking stubborn in his ways that it has to be his way or nobody's way. And that's that's hey. that's the hindrance. So that's as long as you opinion. don't get in the way of the way. No, he, he's definitely gonna try to get in the way of the way. Please don't I mean, get in the he, way of the way. He, he's already started, especially with uh, having, you know, bringing Austin Theory up and then basically throwing him right back down. So it's for real, though. And that that's that's what sucks. I mean, granted, I'm glad that he actually did go back down because he didn't they, they, they didn't allow him to get thrust into obscurity. So that's that's a plus. 
Oh well, yeah, he didn't go on. He didn't go down with the ship uh, like uh, Andrade and Zelina did. So, unfortunately, yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, unfortunate. I mean, yeah, for her. <laughs> like, but I mean, he 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 did get a wrestle uh, a WrestleMania appearance. So that that is true. That that is very point. true. Granted, it wasn't it wasn't much of 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 an appearance, but he uh he got something, and he can at least say that he was in WrestleMania. He wrestled in WrestleMania, so. Only yeah. bad thing was it was last year's WrestleMania, <laughs> where where there were. Does that go down as like the worst WrestleMania? No, I don't I think don't, it goes down as the worst. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's the worst. Like as far as like in ring, but as far as like the overall spectacle, yeah, I'd say it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was also their first ever two night WrestleMania. So that was a two night WrestleMania. Yeah. Man, they, they, you know what, they, they, sh I mean, I, I agree with the idea of it, but I just, New Japan just does it better. New Japan does it better. That, like the whole two night thing, like you, you have, you have to be prepared, like fully and not on the Vince McMahon tip where you're just planning as you go. Like you have to have right. that build up, like perfect. Um, but as far as build up, to continue on with Scarlet and Regal situation, they had, I don't oh. know, it, it, it happened during the time of what we had talked about. I'm not sure when, but it happened throughout the show. But Sandals Escobar had an interview and basically him talking about uh, Karrion Cross. Oh, yeah. Talking about time and how he's given him time and all this shit like that. And so then you had Mendoza and uh and wild come into play and and My basically man, no you're good bro and and basically he said just uh here's here's the way you can pay me back after losing and that's make sure he doesn't make it to next week which of course everybody knew who he was talking about you know but you can't you can't send lack and, and this is one of the main reasons why I started to look at Wild and Mendoza as lackeys and not as as perfect competitors. And that's because he treated them exactly as such. Yeah, the way that they've been used, and it's like you know, and and of course I would understand the whole sentiment behind sending them out there. That's cool, but you haven't built them up enough to make them an imposing force. And be like, hey, all right, we're gonna go take care of this. Especially yeah. when he handled them weeks prior, you know, <laughs> so. My thing is, what makes you think that them going after him is going to render any results that were different from when they went up against him the previous time? So, of course, <laughs> they didn't they didn't waste time throughout the show to get back to Wild and Mendoza laid out, which I'm glad they did it like that because that shows that he made quick work of them and it was effortless. And as the camera kind of went down, you saw you you saw um Scarlet's feet walk by, and then out of nowhere, Karen just came into the camera like, "Oh!" And he he threw he threw that message. He said, "You know, it's it's what it's what they said. You know, you want something done right, you got to do it yourself." And yeah, so he, he gave TikTok. He, TikTok and gave Santos that that good old uh, message, and Santos is gonna get that uh, that work, not the work Scarlet gets, but. <laughs> But <laughs> my God. He's, gonna, he's gonna he's gonna get that you, great work. So RIP or, Santos Escobar. You know what? You know what? We're in the we're in the we're in the age of empowerment now. I think maybe uh maybe Cross is gonna get the work Scarlet gives. After oh. after he does his <laughs> due diligence in the yes. ring and takes care of yes. Santos Escobar. Yes. Every every action. Should be rewarded. Every accomplishment should be rewarded. <laughs> Hard work pays off, people. He, he he gives that work to Escobar. She gives that work to him. There we go. <laughs> Are you gonna hear this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so there's gonna be a crowd there. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all I'm gonna be chanting is "This is awesome," <laughs> and and fight forever. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> after after all the uh 
the good old shenanigans. We had we did have a few vignettes of um to build up for the three ladies. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well yeah because you had um mm. you had Mercedes the, Martinez vignette and then you had EOS vignette. Tony Storms with, and then EOS. Yeah. EOS was the best out of the three. She say, "Fam, yeah. I won my belt in a triple threat. Fuck triple threats, fam. I got this." Yo. The way I and, got this. This is this, and this is one of the ways that you actually have, and, and of course, Eo can speak English, but her mm-hmm. lang- her primary language is Japanese. This is how you build a star who does not speak English. The way that they're doing this is what they could have done with Asuka on the main roster plenty of fucking times. They use those subtitles to it, and they like when you have to read that shit, just like I read it this week with during that mm-hmm. promo. For some odd reason, and maybe that's because I, I'm I'm an anime guy and I've I've read plenty of subtitles and I just know how certain things hit when you read them. So yeah, exactly. The way that she stated certain things is like you know, you know the May the May Young Classic was years ago. It's like mm. I'm a champion. It's like you're not a champion. You are a challenger. You know, and then to have her talk about Mercedes, like you spent 20 years chasing a championship mm-hmm. that I have yeah. and <clears throat> moving forward it's like I'm going to be champion so you're going to continue to chase that dream forever and ever and ever and I was just like oh. only like- <laughs> only because I want to see y'all's reaction if I'm looking at this right mm-hmm. Dominic and Rey Mysterio are fighting Sami Zayn and King Corbin and if I've been reading my subtitles right, which we be talking about subtitles, <laughs> the winner of this tag team match, those two are in the elimination chamber. That's a so then, way to get into the chamber. So who wins that then, guys? I'm immediately yeah. saying uh, Corbin and Sammy. I, I think would, so, too. I would say that because it makes the most sense. Um, yes. I don't but the match is happening now. The match is happening now, so I'll update y'all if that was the actual rules. But yeah, the the vignettes. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like like for and the reason why I say that this was the better of the three outside of just the subtitles and the way that it is. But the way that Eo oh. has carried herself as a champion, like her whole demeanor ever since right the, the 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 gimmick change a little bit and then mm-hmm. becoming a champion, it's like she has elevated her stock to the point to where. I don't know how I could see her like previously when they start talking about the genius of the sky when she was when she had just had started out. Like I don't even mm-hmm. like, recognize that Eo Shrine anymore. I only see no. this. And it's just like this is how NXT builds their stars. Like if you look at every single fucking champion they've had, they that they've had time with. Let me let me preface it with that. Every champion that they've had time to build. Mm-hmm. They are like they they go from wherever they came from to elite status. You think of Oscar, who had already been like elite, and what they did to elevate that, they gave her an undefeated streak, and mm-hmm. they made her seem fucking legit. Like again, who nobody's ready for Oscar. That was very apparent. And then during every feud that Oscar had, she elevated other people within that. Nikki Cross, for instance. Granted, she never won a title, but they still made Nikki Cross look good. Shayna Baszler, who is a shell of herself right now. Oh my you, God. You can't tell me, even out. See, and that, that's the crazy thing is that you go from Oscar with the undefeated streak to having somebody who looks way more dominant than Oscar in Shayna Baszler. How she comes in, it's like, you know what? I just want to beat your ass. Like, simple as that. Like, it, no, mm-hmm. no, cheap, no games, no nothing. It's like, we are going to fight, and that's how it's going to be. And she. Yeah, so uh, not to cut you off, Dizzle, that was the rules. So Zami Zayn and Corbin won, so they are in the elimination chamber with KO and Jay Uso. That's some bullshit. <laughs> I mean, there's a thousand and one better ways to put people in an elimination chamber. Yeah. So now there's still two more spots to fill. And and how are you just gonna like because when when is the elimination chamber? Uh, the twenty first. This Sunday, but next Sunday. So, so many pay per views in this so one. You're, you're telling me you couldn't have taken last week, this week, and next week, 
and take the time to fill those spots. Like that's that's TV time you can actually feel the right way. Like, why are you rushing it? You know, they're, right. they're, well, at this point, you're giving me no reason to tune in the next week or to be intrigued by like who's gonna win these spots. Like before, you would they 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 would play it would it would be it would be paint by numbers. But it would be the right way a long time ago because they'd always do the same thing. The cliche, put the screen up. You have all the shadow figures on the thing. And it's like, who's going to take spots? And as those spots got filled up, you'd have one person fill in one spot, one person fill in the other spot. Up until like the the go home show where it's like you still had one spot left. It's like, okay, who's going to get into that spot? And you have story built around that entire situation. And now it's just like, okay, we got a pay-per-view. All right, let's go ahead and fill these matches out. It's like why why am I watching this? It's like why? Mm-hmm. But- See, if you were to talk to child me that was watching WWE and the and you know when we were all growing up in our awkward years, mm-hmm. you'd remember that exactly to your point, Lip, that like they'd spend maybe three weeks to four weeks on this, trying like sprinkle in people, and then on the last when they had on the last week the go home show they would. Oh, yeah. They would have like a um, what's up? Uh, breaking news. Uh, it oh. would be the dirty. It would be the dirty dogs, aka Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, mm-hmm. right. versus Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. And the winning team will be the other two. Well, that's then I can Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's obvious. Well, why are they doing it so obvious? Anyways. All right, well, my bad. You going back to your point, Gagger? I just want to let y'all know that that's the other match that that was just announced. Oh, my point was just to like reinforce lips. Was just that they would even like throw in the extra drama, even of you know what? Hey, this this fight finished dirty because this guy showed up. So now we're gonna make it a triple threat. So a guy that you didn't even think was gonna be in this could be in this, and mm-hmm. you'd have a manager like Teddy Long. And you know what? Just for fuck's sake, let's just have you fight the Undertaker. Like I don't like. Yeah. There was just random <laughs> swerves like that. Like, and now it's just so I don't know televised and announced. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what 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 happened to the beat the clock challenges? What happened to you know all the spots? Where, where's, where's the last chance match? You know, for all the Iron guys, Man matches for it. You know, and and you know what? And to, and to make the situation better, the, here's how you could have fixed what happened tonight. You take that same tag team match, you have that happen, but then you have the winners face each other for a spot. That would have mm-hmm. built more than especially with the yes. mysterious. And it's like, okay, you got father versus son. If they won, okay, cool. Now you got to have that tension there. It's like, oh, well, shit. You know, Ray's been there, but now you have Dominic as the up-and-comer. It's like now, it's like, I'm intrigued. Who's going to win? Is it going to be father? Is it going to be son? You know, what's going to happen after they, you know, is one going to be bitter from the other? It's like, like how, how do you not know how to book this shit? Like, seriously. Again, they don't pay me for this shit. So, what the fuck ever. Right. But <laughs> anyway, but on on to on to some good booking. The main event for NXT. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me hit it. <laughs> well, hold on. So we had Thatcher and uh, uh, Champa versus the grizzled young veterans. <laughs> and that's how you do it, folks. Boy, I, I don't know what it is about those two, but damn it, anything GYV does, they got me hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Yeah. They, look, this match, and, and the thing is, the, the psychology with everything, because I, I had my questions and my doubts about, like, how I wanted this match to go and who I wanted to go over, because, of course, again, and just before I even get to that, let me get with that 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 promo that Thatcher and Chandler. Yes. Had. Yes. Because that again, like I got I got goosebumps from the way that they just delivered that whole thing. You had them sitting next to each other, Champa talking, and then Champa signing off with Thatcher's sign off. Mm-hmm. And then they the back. like I was like, yo, I'm getting chills now thinking about it now. It's like. Like that, that's how you build character. That's how you build a match. That's how, like, that's fucking talent. But the psychology but you, with everything. Go ahead. I would say, but did you catch the promo my boy uh, Gibson dropped on the way to the ring? 
They and was that, like, how can y'all two even be a tag team? Thatcher, you betrayed yeah. your last partner, Chumper. Look what happened with you in tag teams. So how can y'all even be considered a tag team? Like, and, and this right here was one of the reasons why this that that promo that that promo alone changed my mind on it being okay for Thatcher and Champa to lose because mm-hmm. what that what that promo did was basically try to set up that that MacGuffin of that whole dissension between the two. It's like you know yeah y'all you know y'all are singles wrestlers y'all y'all have the potential to betray each other and I was like okay the way they said that that's not what's gonna happen. That means that mm-hmm. if they lose they're gonna be okay. And they're actually still going to be attacking, which means that 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 eliminates that whole process. So I was like, you know what? Now let's get into the match. And I wanted this match to go longer because I wanted more out of it. Right. Because just the way that they kind of came into it, it was like the whole again the psychology with this match. You still had uh, GYV basically schooling two former tag team champions. Mm-hmm. in the art of tag team because the way that they use each other it was like okay cool yeah granted Thatcher and Ciampa are two former tag champions with different partners and they are great in their respective talents mm-hmm. but they haven't been a team for that long and they don't have that that same dynamic or or, or familiarity with each other that GYV has and that's what technically won the match over for for GYV. Mm-hmm. And it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a situation of whether or not, you know, they could hang with a former, you know, world champion or a former, you know, tag champion regardless. It was the fact that they just had better psychology within the tag team realm. And that's what the story was within this match. And this is why I wish that it went longer. But granted, they still told the story within a good time, but the ending is what basically called it. And that was the fact of Ciampa going in, coming back after being hurt, but coming in for the widow's bell and mm-hmm. then having um I think they had Drake. Drake was in was it was was in the position for the widow's bell, I believe. I think so. I think it was Drake. And, and, and so and then Zach Gibson came and he grabbed his legs. So that way mm-hmm. he wouldn't have that momentum pull him yeah. forward. And perfect. Just mm-hmm. perfect. And that's why I'm glad because now you have two teams. And it's funny because it's what you were talking about, you know, a few podcasts ago, Scoot, where you had said that it was all singles uh, competitors who were mashed together with makeshift teams mm-hmm. being the winners outside of UE being like the only real legit tag team that actually has mm-hmm. won. Dusty Classic, and now you have two legit tag teams going in to to basically go for the Dusty Cup. Which at this point, again, and this is why I say that, that this is why I wanted this match to be the finals because of the fact that it would have solidified the fact that okay, yeah, two singles competitors can actually come in and make a good team, but all in all, you can't beat tag team psychology. Mm-hmm. And I wish that was a story going in. And so now you have a different story, which is not bad because MSK, again, is a good tag team. But for story purposes, I felt like this should have been given more time and been like the finals. So, yes. But. So it definitely would have been more hard hitting. Yes. Yes. And but at the same time, I don't take anything away from the from the actual finals match, which is I believe is going to be a clash of styles and it's going to be a very, very good match. So here's a uh, here's to that shit. I just hope that. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on the same page, and we just get that that same magic that we had in the very first match of of NXT. So, mm-hmm. and of course they uh, they they pulled something different. They uh, basically reminded everybody that they had the whole card set up. And this one I thought was a little cheesy, just a little too. bit, <laughs> I it was a little cheesy, but I did, I did too. All right, so with that being said, while we're here, let's go ahead and do these uh, Vengeance Day predictions. Uh, okay. I say let's start with Kushida versus Gargano. Who do we think is going to take it? Gargano. He he has to. 
He I'm leaning. Uh, I'd I like it. I kind of want Kushida. Same. I kind of want Kushida. Oof. Because then that, I mean, it would fit with Gargano's narrative too of like short lived title reigns. Yeah. Especially with the U.S. title. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm still going to go with Gargano just because I feel like. Un, well, damn, because no, I, I still don't see him in uh, Austin Theory going after tag titles. So mm -mm. I I think this may be the one thing that, uh, damn it. You know what? No, I'm just I'm not even a reason why. I'm just going to say Gar Gargano is going to take it. He's going to okay. find a way to take it. Because if any, I, I think the one person that is going to take it from him is probably going to be Loomis. Loomis. Yeah, okay. Because I think what's going to happen is once Loomis takes it, then you're going to get. Um, you're going to get Grimes back into the fray against Loomis. And I think Grimes is going to take that title from Loomis because I don't think Loomis is going to have a long reign. I think Grimes is going to come in with this new gimmick. He's going to take the title off of Loomis mm. and start with it. So I Damn, say that works too. Yeah, it does. Kushida, and then the next feud is going to be Loomis, which probably will be like WrestleMania weekend. And then. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. You're going to have Grimes come in and then take that. And he's going to take that shit to the moon. So, <laughs> okay, I can see that. So, see that. with this information, I will say Kushida loses, but not clean. Yeah, that's that, that's definitely. I could definitely, I could one hundred percent see that happening. Yeah. All right. So next up, I'm gonna say the women's dusty final: Raquel and Dakota versus Ember and Shotzi. Man, why you gotta make me upset? Why you gotta make me upset, man? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sad already on know who I'm going for. Yeah, the uh, I mean, clearly Shotzi and uh, <laughs> and Ember Moon, yeah. Look, it's it's gonna be the Kiwi Buzzsaw and Big Mommy Cool, definitely, definitely. That uh, that that's that's the way that it should go. I mean, honestly, like nothing against Ember and Shotzi, but as far as the dynamic and the way that we've kind of seen them and the and what we've kind of related them to, being like old school Shawn Michaels and 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 Diesel. Mm -hmm. I think that that dynamic is what's needed, and that's what needs to have the titles on them. Because I don't think Ember and Shotzi gain anything from having the tag titles. Like to be honest, no. As yeah, uh, as sad that. as it makes me to, <laughs> like, makes you a little sad. As sad as it makes rather, me, yeah. I'd rather, I'm just uh, Shotzi personally have the NXT Women's title rather than uh, tag titles. That's a big old yelp. I think she's gonna win it. Though. I think at some point, she, Shotzi is gonna win that title, like for sure. She has too much uh, charisma not to at this point. So yeah, I can I can see her as the face of the women's division. All right, next let's do the women's triple threat with uh, Io Shirai, champ versus Mercedes Martinez and Tony Storm. Who's taking that one? This this kind of goes back to what we talked about before, where I stated that I I can't see anybody taking that title off of EO. Like I still don't see anybody that's credible enough at this point to be able to take that title outside of it being a returning Tegan. So Ooh. I, I I still believe that EO is going to retain on this one. It'll be a good match though, but EO retains. Same. Because, and the reason I think it's a triple threat is because I think either Mercedes is probably going to be the one to take the fall. But I think it's a triple threat because they're trying to build up one of the other competitors. So one person has to take a fall. And which is usually the reason for a triple threat match is for somebody to take the fall to, to make one person not look weak. So. So uh, oh, oh, look, looking, at, looking at I, you, Tony Storm. Uh, he's I, looking honestly, good at this. You know, I, I, I kind of want EO to keep it, but I think they might pull something and maybe Tony might get end up getting it. Because then she could be the second woman to say she had both titles. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. See, and I, I would want to go with that, but with Rhea technically being on the main roster now, I don't see – well, I mean, I can still see a reason for her having bragging rights, but 
I think that would have been a good reason to build up like a story to have them have like a third match, a, a third technically like championship match. Yeah. But yeah, with Rhea gone, it, it, it makes it hard. But I can see if they're going to bring EO up and Tony's going to be the, the one that holds it, then I, I definitely, then at that point, it's, it's either going to be a return in Tegan or a Shotzi that's going to take that title off of Tony, if that's the case. But I still, I still kind of stand with EO because I think uh-huh. that she's probably having, she has a few more legs with the title. And I feel like if anything, she'll probably go, she'll probably be called up after Mania, if anything. So I, I'd see that she's holding that title till Mania. To Mania. That makes sense, too. All right. Um, the men's Dusty Classic finals with the grizzled young veterans versus MSK. Let me let me hear you hit that one more time, Scoot. That, that's just too good. The grizzled young veterans. Yeah, that's my pick. <laughs> and MSK. Um, yeah, my, my pick is GYV. But Same. Um, that's been my pick since the tournament started. I would not be surprised <laughs> if they allowed MSK to take it, but that to me that's like a ten percent chance because ninety percent of that is definitely going to GYV because there's no reason why you would have them lose two in a row. You know, yeah, yeah, that, yeah it's 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 all it's almost a given at this point. So, GYV. now does GYV get the titles from Lorkin and Birch? No, hey, really, hey. you don't think so? Yeah, unless now, unless they because I mean, I know GYV is technically tweeners at this point, at least, at least mm-hmm. they're acting like it because they don't care about anybody. But, <laughs> um, I don't know, it, it, it feels like like somebody's gonna come in and take those titles off of uh Lorcan and, Lorcan Birch, and Birch. Bef- mm-hmm. like, like out of nowhere because they they haven't really done anything, so usually when that happens. They they usually lose in like a fluke victory to somebody else. So true. Um, and then that's when GYV stakes their claim, and it's like, yo, we won the Dusty Class. We haven't, we still haven't got our title match. So y'all are the uh, the sacrificial lambs. Okay. So that team, I don't know. I don't know who that team is going to be, but yeah. All right, and last but not least, we got the Bruiserweight Pete Dunn. Versus the Prince Finn Balor, who is taking that one? Um, <laughs> as much as I want to see Dunn win it, I don't see Balor losing. I think that I think it's ultimately going to be Balor and uh, Cross. Yeah, yeah. And with, yeah. The, with the way that they've built up Finn's title reign now, it's it's set it's setting him up to be okay to lose to cross because of how many basically wars he's going to go in, you know, cause basically yeah. the story, you know, glass jaw, um, just, uh, mm-hmm. I, think, I think Pete Dunn said over the hill at some point and they're basically having a, a war torn Finn going against a, a completely dominant cross. And yeah. So I think yeah. that's what that's what's gonna happen is he's just gonna come in and be dominated by by cross because it's there's really no other way. And it, it this is a good excuse because he's come in and he's been beat up since he's won that title. So right, yeah. <laughs> right. You I think from that Iron Man match to the one on one to like you said, the Kyle O'Reilly defenses, you're right. <laughs> so th- yeah, this is definitely gonna be something to where it's like he, he's he's going to have that bravado going in against Cross, and it's going to be a nice build, and it's going to be an even greater match. But at the end of the day, it's it's going to be that 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 wear and tear on Finn that ultimately causes him the uh, the championship. So definitely, definitely. All right. So that was NXT, ladies and gents. And with that being said, fellas, I don't know if you noticed my color scheme that I've been having going on, you know, with the black and white all going on. And I'm just saying, you know, even though the weather outside is a little cold out here in the Houston streets, but, you know, they're getting a little toasty. And with that being said, you know, just letting y'all know. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Oh, I I can't see it. 
Oh, you, oh, you it, can't see his, it? His camera's frozen on my end. Oh, no, it's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, then. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me come back, and then you will see it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I I uh I apologize here. No, you uh you're good. You're you're good. You're gonna be mad that um uh, that, oh, you, that, you that you didn't pull the trigger first. Oh, no pun intended. That that goodbye and good night. Bang. You know. <laughs> to let the people know. Oh, there it go. Oh, there it go. To let the people know. You know what I'm saying? Oh. How, how uh, Excalibur said, you know, you got to give the people what they want. Oh, you got to. You know. <laughs> is that the uh, four life one or is that just a straight up Bullet Club one? Just straight Bullet Club. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Oh, man. But oh. yeah, so um, with the AEW story I have, it's Ooh. a very unique one in a sense because... Um, it was a story that was discussed on uh, the Jim Cornette experience, but the mainly the, the story is really more of how do y'all feel about people who always comes to the defense of something? Like, like for instance, let's, so to give a preface to the story, sure. Dave Meltzer is a super defender of AEW. Yeah. That yeah. if you say anything negative about AEW, <clears throat> he's coming at you. And yeah. Brian Last and Dave Meltzer had like a little back and forth over it. So at this point, is Dave Meltzer basically just dick riding uh, AEW or he really just enjoy it? And why do people got to be such super defenders over things? Like, you can't have a great product without some negativity or some of the negative to make it better. Mm -hmm. So with him saying that almost everything AEW do is damn near perfect, they can quote unquote never get better because nothing they do is wrong. Yeah. So that's the question yeah. I pose to both of you guys. Do y'all think at this point Dave Meltzer is just dick riding or he really enjoys it? And why are there such super defenders of AEW? Hmm. To answer yeah. the second question first, mm -hmm. being uh, why are there so such super defenders of AEW? Mm -hmm. It feels like that people are putting like all their chips into the AEW basket, looking for it to eventually take over, well, the parent WWE. No, I shouldn't say parent, but the big boss. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I know I would love to see something like that down the road, but I am I know it's not happening this year. Shit's probably not happening next year. Might happen in five years. We'll see. Hmm. But... Yeah, I can understand the people that want to pull for it, but don't deride it all the way. Yeah. For for Meltzer to say, I mean, for to go into the uh, suspicion that Meltzer is thinking everything's perfect, it would be a little, I guess, it would be naive of Meltzer to do. I mean, look at all mm -hmm. the the matches he's that he's called, and I mean, but look at who his favorite guys are. They're all at AEW right now. And that was one of the things that they were saying. It was the fact that if you, because uh, Brian Last said he has read every wrestling observer ever. Like he reads them all. Yeah. And he was saying, you know, back in the day, Meltzer would have tore stuff like this apart. So yeah. not to say yeah. that, yeah, his, his uh, preference changing, but the fact that he's so just here, like, you can't mention anything negative about AEW without him firing back at you. And he was like, what is happening with uh, Uncle Dave, as they call him? Like, what yeah. is going on with Uncle Dave here? So I'd say, yeah, he just he got cozy with some wrestlers that he honestly should. If you if he wanted to keep 
the legitimacy of his reviews and his like wrestling opinions like legit, mm-hmm. then he probably shouldn't have cozied up so much to uh, to Kenny, to the Bucks, to Cody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit. I met him in person when I was at All In. Like he was there. He was. Yeah. In it, <laughs> and <laughs> and I mean, was it? I wasn't there for the conversation he had with my friend, but it seemed like he's just <laughs> forgive the forgive the pun here, but he was all in on AEW. Yeah, or at least what was the infant stage of AEW? Mm-hmm. I mean. My my thing as far as my my take on it is for especially when it comes to the fans when you have the ones who were AEW can do no wrong. It's it's more so the fact that you know nobody really wants that honeymoon phase to die. You know, especially if you, if if you have something that you love so much, you would hate somebody to criticize it. And you have some of these so so many of these diehard fans who followed BTE, who followed everything that's going on in New Japan and ROH with the whole Bullet Club thing. Like you like. I don't. I, I mean, the whole bullet company. I mean, you, some people don't. You know, they they would say it's like it, it's a cult thing at some point. You know, but you know, it's not. It's just a way that you know people's take on wrestling. It's like oh, hold on, sidebar before you finish. Uh, they think the only reason why these shirts sold so well in America was because people thought it was a gun related thing and not a wrestling thing. That's what they think. That's- that's why it was. Uh, that's why it was only sort of hot topic because you know all the NRA members love hot topic. Apparently, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, and the, the, here's here, here's the here's the reason why why that's bullshit. Because as as somebody who who enjoys the the BC for life lifestyle, I'm gonna tell you this. Anytime I saw somebody with the Bullet Club shirt. I did the same thing every time, whether I went to, to Gen Con in Indianapolis, whether I was here in, in, in Houston, where I was anywhere. Anytime I saw somebody with a bullet shirt, I would walk and be like, yo, too sweet. And it's the same thing every time. Too sweet. Every fucking time. Mm-hmm. No questions asked. No looking. Well, what are you doing? I guess because he met the one guy. Brian Lass said he went to a party and he <laughs> met the one guy who had a Bullet Club shirt on and the guy <laughs> thought it was a gun related thing. So... I guess because of that one person he met that thought this was a gun related thing. <laughs> he thinks that the only reason why they merch so so well in the US is because they thought it was a gun nut thing. Well, that see that and that that's fun. I mean, granted, I've, I've heard that rumor before, but at the mm-hmm, same yeah. time, I personally had never met one person who misconstrued what Bullet Club was. Same. So, same. you know, but again, I'm a wrestling fan, so there's that, but either way, but that, that goes to my point, you know, you never, you know, if you, if you like something, you never really want it criticized, especially from somebody who doesn't get it. And I think that's where that parallel from, you know, you got Dave Meltzer and you have Jim Cornette, where it's like, you have mm-hmm. the one who's on the extreme side of like, Oh, I hate it. They can't do anything right. And then you have the other extreme where it's like, Oh, well, they can't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. That, that, that disconnect, it, it messes up a lot of things because you you I mean you have you have perfect hmm. examples on what can happen if you're blind on one side and blind on the other and you have guys in the middle like us who love the products and we praise it for what it does right but we also criticize for what it does wrong so but that's not to say that you don't have those outliers who are going to look at it and be like oh you know they can never do anything wrong oh that's that's fucking great because you have the same thing on WWE side. WWE is fucking trash, but you have people that look at it and say, oh, y'all are just stands for AEW. Or y'all hate it because y'all like this and like that. So, again, you 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 really can't win because you're going to have those in every pocket. So, yeah. But, you know, Dave, Dave has gone a little a little a little far. <laughs> but, hey, it, but he, he said one, it, one one might say he might be drinking some of the Kool-Aid. I mean, Cornette said he went ahead and blocked him on Twitter because he can't stand to see what Dave has turned into. Yo, I tried to follow this Twitter back and forth, and it literally ended with a tweet with that Brian last deleted, and I can't go back any further. Mm. But Meltzer's reply to his is, uh, 
What reply? Did he address all the specifics of what I said? Would love to see it. And it says tweet is unavailable. I know it's some shit, right? I need to find more of these tweets. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, that's they, they them and themselves. So, wow. See now, now I have I have dog issues now. Ain't that some shit? But um, <laughs> but either either way, I mean, yeah, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't, because you're gonna have yeah. every, every type of person. Who criticizes and praises it in their own in their own manner? Except for us, right. we we do it right. I if mean, you, that's what I always think personally. Yo. That if you really truly love something, you can criticize it as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can see the faults in something you truly love, no matter how much you in the honeymoon phase or whatever. I always felt if you really love something, you can criticize it at the same time. And I'm glad that you said that, Scoot, because. Yeah. For, for everybody for who's praising WWE and to WWE themselves, it's not the fact that we just hate the product like that. It's the fact that we know that what you're doing is fucking lackluster and we want the best for it. We want to watch it. We just the can't stand it to put on, to, on, on TV because it's fucking trash and it insults <laughs> our intelligence. I don't like my intelligence being insulted. I know yes. I'm not stupid. I'll no. I went to school, like Booker T says. <laughs> exactly. I went to school. So, yeah. Fuck y'all, WWE. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. What, what, what else you got on the docket, Scoot? Uh, that was really it. I didn't really hear too much uh, AEW things. So, that was just really more of an interesting take to see what y'all thought about with Uncle Dave and basically him, quote unquote, Dick riding AEW. He's um, approaching dangerous waters with it, but I don't think he's yeah. there yet. Well, oh, uh, uh, Jaeger, to update you uh, oh. on because, like I said, this was the first cornet I listened to in a while. Right. He updated the uh, Young Bucks name. Oh, so they're no. not the uh they're not the young fucks anymore. They're the uh Hardly Bros. Hardly <laughs> bros. Are the are the are the Hardly brothers. Now so wait now is is he just saying hardly just to say hardly or is he saying it from like the South Park reference from the Hardly he Boys? Is, he is a South Park fan. Okay. So I don't know. Because I don't know. That insult would hit harder if he was trying to say like they're the hard. Yeah, <laughs> it could be like I said. He is a he is a huge South Park fan, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Serpentico is dwarf dome sucker number two. <laughs> uh, dwarf dome sucker number two. dong dong sucker. Oh dong! I mean dome yep. dong. It kind of like still means the same yeah. thing, but damn. You know, because you know, dwarf dome sucker number one is Marco Stunt. Uh, who else? Um, Look, Cornette, somebody else who gave a name too, and I just literally Cornette, forgot. I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, Cornette. I'll, I'll I'll make the public apology right here. I am sorry that not every competitor can be over six five and weigh two hundred and fifty pounds. I'm sorry that Marco Stunt just draws, despite the fact that he's <laughs> under five ten. Like same with, I mean, Darby Allen might be around five ten, but he's under two hundred pounds, and yet he's a TNT champ. So, fuck you. I don't know. <laughs> like, get with the times, old man. Fuck. <laughs> if I could think of more, the I'll update throughout the show. But yeah, that was basically some updates to uh, nicknames. Like, right, what other shit? What's he? Get, what does he call Thunder Rosa? I wonder. Oh no, he loves Thunder Rosa. Oh, he loves Thunder Rosa. Set up. <laughs> oh, I, you're of, telling me that I agree with Cornette on something? What the fuck? So, so speaking of, they keep calling Big Swole the worst wrestler in AEW. What was so horrible about that tooth and nail match? Because I don't right? think I, I don't think I saw the tooth and nail match. So what was so bad in that match? Because I mean, it was a cinematic a, match. You know, it, it, uh -huh. it, in a way, it was kind of messy as a cinematic match, but it wasn't like it was more entertaining than it really was like a match. You know, there wasn't okay. much that really went into it, like match 
psychology wise outside of from the part when they actually like went outside and they wrestled for a bit but uh -huh. anything inside the actual dental office was like you know it's what you would get from like any like cheesy segment on WWE TV so because apparently they absolutely hated that match and they hated it so much that they that they invoked the tooth and nail rule and the tooth and nail rule is anybody who was involved in that match they will fast forward their matches now that that's just that that's retarded because <laughs> like i said so that's why i'm asking y'all because i i didn't get a chance to see the tooth and nail match so i was like what was so bad in that match to where they think big swole is the worst wrestler ever <laughs> i mean and and how they you, lost mainly their confidence in Britt Baker a little bit. How do you arrive to that conclusion? Yeah, that's I don't that, know. That 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 go that goes with that extreme shit though. You know, again. That's why I wanted to ask y'all, like, was there something I missed that was that match that bad or what? But I mean, yeah. It wasn't the greatest thing, but I mean we've seen worse things on TV before. So technically, okay. yeah. I mean, if that, if that's the case, if you if you if you were going to deem somebody for a bad match, then you might as well go and 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 take impact, for instance, with the Sting and Jeff Hardy match. When oh when oh Hardy god, gone out of his fucking ass. You might as well just go ahead and just demonize him for the rest of his life if that's the case. But I'm pretty sure Jim Cornette didn't do that. So no. again, there are way worse matches that have happened to where you can demonize other people, but this oh, again, it's a and, cinematic. Uh, not to upset y'all even more before we get into the Dynamite review. Mm -hmm. Last week's main event was the worst match of the night, according to them. Last week's main event. Oh, you talking about the uh, the six man? Yeah. It wasn't a bad match. That was, was not a bad match. match. It was horrendous to them. Like I said, I enjoy listening to just hear. And they just say the complete opposite of everything we say, and it's entertaining as hell to me. I just don't think they—they, they, I don't think they like the spot fest, which I mean, they I can, really don't. I can understand that, but I mean, at the same time, it's not like it's bad because that's—it's with the people that you have inside the ring. You know, you have people yeah. that cater to their own style. So, and with oh, Phoenix is Felix. <laughs> Ray Phoenix. I mean, it, is, it, is, it is kind of it is kind of spelled like Felix, just you know, without the L. And uh, apparently, he keeps calling her Jane Cardgill instead of J uh, Jade. And I Brian finally did. asked him, "Why do you refuse to call her Jade?" He says he think he remembers on her first promo, she said Jane Cardgill. Um, no. Like I said, I could either. I I don't recall that at all, to be honest. So yeah, that's why he calls her Jane instead of Jade. So she's Jane Cargill, and then on the WWE side, Nia Jax is Nia Jax. I mean, it sounds like Cornette just has a problem with pronouncing names to me. <laughs> he does it on purpose because every now and then Brian will keep c correcting him, but he does it on purpose. Because he kept calling Rob Gronkowski, Ron Gronkowski, and he just kept doing it. So he does it to be antagonistic, to be perfectly honest with you. Like, I mean, hence, hence why hence why Kenny Omega went from Kenny Olivier to Twinkle Toes McFinger Bang. Like, come on. That's being antagonistic to the 10th power. Yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> it really is. But, all right, Mr. Host. Get it rolling with dynamite. <laughs> you got it. So the um, the first match, which I, I was surprised they started off with with this match, same was uh was was the TNT Championship match between Darby and Joey Janela, which I have to take back. Jelly Nutella, by the way. I, I have to take back what, yeah, I, what I said. Jelly um, Nutella. Jelly 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 Nutella. <laughs> jelly Nutella. All right. All right. I believe it was either last week or the week before that I have to take back because when I talked about Darby and being in the in the feud with Taz and hosting shit going on and how they weren't building the TNT championship uh -huh. and then we went on the whole thing about Janela's rankings and stuff like that and mm -hmm. he's like oh he, he's not even ranked he doesn't really deserve a championship match I have to take that back because again 
Cody built up this title very well. And mm-hmm. he basically just took on any and everybody that wanted the, that wanted the chance. Like he didn't go by the mm-hmm. ring. Okay. okay. Damn, open challenge every week. Yeah. Yeah. So I totally forgot Cody did do that. So I gotta take that back. Now, granted, only only the Joey Janela part, everything else, because I felt like the shit with Tasnam is taking away from the TNT championship scene. Now, if you would have had uh, Ricky Starks be the next competitor for that or have Will Hobbs be the next competitor for that, then, yeah, I can be like, okay, cool. He's basically running the gauntlet with Team Taz. But that's not the case. So, again, they could be doing better on that end. But it seems like they're going back on track with this Joy Janela match. So, Mm -hmm. good shit. Um, This this match seemed to kind of just fly by. I don't want to say it was a bad match. It just... It really just honestly just kind of flew by. I, I felt like I blinked and it was like over with. There were some good spots. Right. You can tell like the chemistry between um, Janela and, and and Darby is really, really good. Like, mm-hmm. good. But I mean, they've, they've had a few matches together, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, like and, pro wrestling gorilla in other days. And, and, and uh, commentary touched on it a, a few times, I believe. Ex- but, Excalibur made one sentence about it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, this is um the this is one of the matches that I feel would have benefited from having more time, especially being a championship match, to where you could have actually built up Darby as a champion and built up Joey as a legit competitor for the title down the line. Like this, yeah. in a sense, just headed to where it's like, okay, well, he's just a body to to fill this slot for right now, mm-hmm. and then we're just gonna go on to the next thing. But but yeah, I mean. That's my thoughts on it. Not much to really go over on that one. Y'all have any thoughts on that? Uh, it was okay, match. It was pretty solid. I mean, it was definitely something to give Darby something to do. That's how I looked at it, you know, to give Darby a title defense in between the street fight and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, and and that's not in and about this show too. This show kind of felt the same way. It felt like it did fly by. Like it felt like. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to say like they they were rushing anything, but I mean, and 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 I watched this before I even watched NXT, so the parallels weren't even there to to even match it up with NXT by watching a pack show like NXT and going to this. This mm-hmm. felt like I just rushed, and then once I got into NXT, it was like the slowdown happened. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was definitely um, felt. Well, they had six matches in here, so if you felt like this was like a little faster paced, then yeah, I mean it's rightly placed. <laughs> <laughs> what was um, it? Um, I felt this Joey Janelle and Darby Ma- Allen match was great, considering uh, the build up that Darby even put up prior to this. Yeah, like issuing the challenge to the old Joey Janela, and then I did like how you know with the new year you've got the uh, the ranking system gets reset. So they're they're starting off like Joey Janela. I mean, it's February, but he's two and zero. He's undefeated right now so far. Mm-hmm. Well, so they did prop him up well, and especially because he has like he has name recognition. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, for everything that it was, this match was very well done, in my opinion. I mean, it was not there was nothing bad about it. True. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and, and and that's why I like the uh that they actually did like the promo for Janela as well. Mm-hmm. Because I think if they if they continue that, because I think they they did that before, like when everything first started, they were still giving like Janela promos as well, and I thought that that was going to have that transition over throughout the course of AEW, and it seemed like it fizzled out. But you know, I guess they're they're getting back to form now with Joey Janela as they should, because yeah. he's not a bad wrestler, and he, he actually they benefit from him being in like the matches that are unsanctioned or the hardcore matches or matches that he actually fits well in. So, you know, good on that shit. Justice for, for Julie. <laughs> <laughs> but um, next but was think, a match that definitely could have used less time. It, yeah. Well, I think that, that they have the, uh, the wait, cause uh, I think they yeah, the promo, the, uh, the inner circle shit. Oh, oh, with yeah. Sammy punching, uh, punching, uh, punching, uh, MJF. And Maxwell, the yeah. 
Yeah, I think that was next because I, I I know because I know they yeah, didn't right, right, right into the uh, to the match, but yeah, and I'm this this kind of kind of fed into what I was thinking before because I remember when we first started talking about this a long time ago, I was talking about uh, everybody joining MJF and then the outlier being Sammy becoming yep. a face. Um, I still believe that for the most part, but I still believe what I talked about uh, previously or most recently that he was going to be like that, uh, that, that one last nail in the coffin to, uh, to mm-hmm. Jericho to be with yeah. MJF. So I think this is kind of like a, a setup, a, a very strategic setup. But of course you have the follow-up from, from the previous week where Sammy goes into the locker room and he's basically letting everybody knows like, Hey, get out, give us the room and talk to him. And mm-hmm. it, it's, it's perfect how they, 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 they sprinkle in the, the little tidbits where they had, um, Santana look at MJF and it was like, yo, you good? Yeah. I was, was like, like, whoa. I was like, huh. Like yeah. That's, yeah. And so then you had, so of course, every, they, you, first you had pr- uh, Proud and Powerful get up. Then you had Hager put a, put a hand on, uh, on MJF's shoulder mm-hmm. and yep. then stare at Sammy and then leave. And then of course you, had, you still had Wardlow and Wardlow got the cue to leave. But then this is what makes me believe that this is a situation where Sammy might still be in cahoots with MJF. And that's because he said, cameraman, you stay. Mm-hmm. Because usually the only reason you would want to have that is if you want had evidence for, you know, hey, this is what's going on. Or B, you're trying to set something up to where right. it's like, you know, I'm showing the decision that we have. I'm going to punch you. And then they'll see that I don't like you and continue this. Mm-hmm. So of course, that transition he did this this weird ass fake punch. And of course, you had MJF play that shit up as if his ribs were broken from like that one uh, mm-hmm. kidney shot. <laughs> but, what I did catch and I did like is that you had um, the back and forth between Sammy and MJF, and then if Sammy finally said. Exactly what MJF wanted him to say. It was just like, what, right. do you, what do you want me to tell you, Chris? I mean, what do you want me to tell you, Max? You want me to tell you that I think Chris Jericho sucks? You want me to think that I think that he's just not fit to be a leader, this and that? And then MJF just goes, yeah, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> and uh, takes his phone up and he like, and this is why I think that there's actually like a feud going on is because of that where he's he's recording Sammy. Yeah. And which leads to Sammy then chucking his phone at the wall and then punching him square in the in the ribs. <laughs> and you know what? It would be one hell of a swerve if they actually come around and Sammy's been in the cahoots with Max that whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there there there's another reason why I still be- I, I do believe that, but we'll talk about that later when during the next segment that comes up. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, and this is like the 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 way that they've been building this up. I'm. Like uh, it's been up and down, but like I'm way more intrigued as it's gone on now because of the fact that, like, you have the build up between like, okay, well, who's gonna actually join? Who's gonna be in his side? Who's not? You know, so on and so forth. So, but more more on that shit to come. But the next match, uh, not my favorite, and it definitely, uh, it definitely shows why you need to have a lot more <laughs> why you need to have certain matches on dark and certain matches on dynamite because mm-hmm. chemistry is is a huge huge thing and if it's not there you have accidents um that match was Cody and Lee Johnson versus Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi if you, I mean, granted, I think the showcase of Lee Johnson was technically by accident because Cody did get hurt in this match, and you could clearly okay, see. Okay, so, 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 what happened? So Cody got put in position for a pump handle slam uh, by Caesar Benoni, mm-hmm. and once Benoni got Cody up, I don't know if he just didn't let go of his arm at the right time. Because when Cody came down, he came down on his shoulder. So I don't know if it's it's a matter of him not letting go, of his arm 
or if Cody just like position wrong and just fell on his fell on his yeah. shoulder. But you you could you could tell once Cody hit the ground, like he was he was in pain. He was trying to shake his arm off and everything, but yeah. again, he fought through the pain. It's 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 a tear. Uh, it's a tear in his rotator cuff, so it's not completely. Also, oh, also, oh, oh, so it's legit that he got hurt. Yeah. Wait, who did Caesar? Right, uh, Cody. Cody. Oh shit! Co- Damn it! That's yeah. why they. That's why I kept seeing all the big announcements about somebody getting injured. Yeah, it's a uh, oh, it's a tear, yeah, it's a tear in his in his rotator cuff, but yeah, it's, it, it was definitely from from that pump handle slam that he got from. Wait, Bernie. wait. Is it going to is it going to impact the match with Shaq? Yeah. That. That is another thing that I that I wanted to bring up because I this want this to see the black tornado. This this, this match. I, I want to see nothing involving a black tornado with Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> My thing is this because I mean they they kept trying to say that it like it may not take a while that it may not take too long for it to heal, but it's going to take a while because it, a rotator cuff uh, when it's when it's messed up it takes longer. Yeah, so hair. Is still going to be longer than it than they need for this match when it comes up. So I believe that it's I don't and I I hate I hate to say it like this, but it's more like a blessing in disguise. You know, you get Cody some time off. You know, get to go spend time with Brandy. You know, while they get prepared for 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 their newborn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get you get Red Velvet to shine because you put her in a singles match. Against Jay Cargill, hey, if, Sha- if Shaq want to be there at ringside, by all means, you go there, be there at ringside, man. Just don't <laughs> touch that ring. Now, oh, you know he's gonna run interference. Come on. Now, right. again, they could easily slot somebody else into this picture to go for Cody, but at that point, it loses all like story. Because why not, why not push uh, the guy who just got his first big win at AEW? Damn, he was really zero and twenty nine. Yeah, Ooh, Lee Johnson. Yes. Shit, I I didn't even know his his record like that. But if that was the case, okay, you know what? Let's let's talk about this. Okay. Oh, and twenty nine. Why? Why the fuck? Why is he part of the Nightmare Family? Is my well, I'm trying to figure why the Nightmare Family is a th- thing because i can understand it being like you know hey cody brandy dustin yes, um, um even qt marshall at this point you know we and arn of course but, arn. oh and arn's kid now made his little debut in the crowd yeah, yeah. but at uh was it Bro- brock anderson yeah something like that yeah um definitely a wrestling name <laughs> right right my my thing it's like, and it, it, it's funny because now it's become a, a, a running joke because everybody's like, oh, you know, they got like 82 members in the Nightmare Family, 170 members in the Nightmare Family, and it's like, it's like that. If if, if that's just a running joke at this point, you Nightmare needs to be nowhere near anybody's name outside of like Cody's, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and that's it because it's becoming a running gag with the Nightmare Collective, Nightmare Family, just, just natural so- nightmares. The, that your natural nightmares. It's just like, it's, no. It's like it's 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 enough. Let's see who's all in this. I'm I'm, I'm gonna pull up the members. No oh, shit. Let's see here. Oh oh. This wow. Is a... The the fact that you that you said it like that means that it's longer than my Justice Four list. So I got eleven members right now. Oh, is it just eleven? So, I mean, but then they have former members, of course, like MJF, Awesome Kong. Oh, they're throwing in uh, Brandy's Nightmare Collective in there as well. Not surprising. And then the part-time members are, of course, DDP, Glacier, Tommy Dreamer, Stephen Amell. So call it call it an even or an odd 15 if you're going to include the part-time members. That's, yeah. Because I know you got Lee Johnson, mm-hmm. you got the Gun Club. Yeah, all those make sense. Three people, Billy, Austin, and Colton. Yeah. You got Cody, who you said. You got Brandy, QT, Dustin, Orn. Uh, who else? All right. Oh, Lee so, Johnson. That, that, that. You also, like you said, Lee Johnson, Aaron Solo, and Nick Camarado. Really? When did they become members? Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado literally became members four days ago. 
Because they just signed Lee Johnson to a contract. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Lee Johnson's been a gun club member since October 30th. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado were this week. Um, DDP, uh, AEW's in-house trainer, is uh, he's been with them since September 1st, 2018. Oh, hey, we know that day. Anyway, um, hmm. same with Glacier, same with Tommy Dreamer. And then, oh, that's interesting, Stephen Amell. Joined last year, like right around this time. Makes hmm. sense. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and ironically, we I, I did mention my, my Justice Four list because all all of you know that Dol- Dolph Ziggler is on my Justice Four list. <laughs> whose 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 real name is Nick Nemeth, and his brother oh, Ryan Nemeth. was in the uh, next match against Pac. But before that, there was a backstage segment with good old, good old Hangman. And <laughs> oh. the, one, the one person on the top of Scoot's most hated list, Matthew Hardy, a.k.a. Money Matt. Yeah, he's, he's Money Matt right now for sure. This... This actually gave me some intrigue with the way that they set this up because, again, you had NXT do that old school trope with Johnny Gargano and the comedic shit. And this, then you had this old school backstage segment where you had that, 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 that mystique as to, as to what's going to happen. Like, what's that, that whole mysterious deal where he put the contract down trying to pull one over on Hangman. And then Hangman did the, you know, switcheroo, had him sign something else. And so now everybody's wondering, hey, what did he sign? So, Scoot, I know you care so much about this, man. What do you think is going to happen? Wait, did Hangman pull a switcheroo? Hangman did pull a switcheroo. I didn't even catch him pulling a switcheroo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was, some, that was some, some Wild West shit there, Hangman Page. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get Scoot. All up in there, Scoot. Oh. Let, 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 oh. let us know. Let us know. Oh just, man, just how you feel. Cameron Grimes is a better big money Matt than Matt Hardy. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. <laughs> now the one thing I did like about this whole situation was how they how they still kept Dark Order in the mix with this because oh another update they're not the dork order anymore they're the job order ouch they've been they've been winning what else what else <laughs> like I'm gonna throw something at Jen Cornette if I ever meet that man <laughs> <laughs> be, it, be it a tomato or a steel chair it depends on what's in my hand at the time but yeah <laughs> The the job order now, so they graduated from the dark order to the, the job order. order. Well, since since the dark order is still in the picture, do we still see Hangman eventually joining the dark order? Or is that a pretty much like a done deal? It it I think honestly it depends on the what they plan on doing with the dark order. Uh-huh. Like if they if they're just keeping them as just like an organization that they are now. Mm-hmm. I can see Hangman going to them only because it'll bring a it'll bring the star power Brody Lee brought. Gotcha. It'll yeah. bring that star power back and it will make them I hate using the word, it will make them quote unquote relevant again in a sense. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I think they do need that shot of adrenaline and I and I and of course I would love to be like hangman's that one person that can give that to them, but that's not, you know, it's it's definitely somebody else that's gonna be that shot of adrenaline. So do I personally see hangman joining? Possibly, but not until that quote unquote shot of adrenaline actually gets injected into the dark order. Oh, we forgot the um the Bucks little interaction. So the Bucks had uh I guess it was an interview segment. 
This is the mm-hmm. first time I've ever seen the Bucks recycle a bit that they use on BTE. Go ahead, throw it mm-hmm. out there. Throw it out there. Oh, sorry, but, but uh, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> in the BTE bit, there was the Bucks like walking down the hall, and then, or or maybe they show up on the green the green screen room. But point is, sorry, my memory's a little hazy since Monday, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> point is. They come up to the Good Brothers and they're like, what "The hell, guys! Like, why would you like pull a distraction in this battle royal when, like, if we would have won, you idiots, we would have like had it been the two of us versus the two of you in the dream match? Like, what the hell?" And, then they, <laughs> and it's almost like script for script. They're like, "Why are y'all mad at us? Like, we our beef is with Private Party. We have a match against them this Saturday. But mm-hmm. like, who you should really be mad at is the Inner Circle." I mean, Santana Ortiz knocked out, uh, knocked out Matt. Then, uh, Jer- then uh, Jericho and MJF knocked, or excuse me, Jericho. Yeah, Jericho and MJF was it Matt first? Yeah, Jericho and MJF knocked out Matt. Or then Nick got knocked out by Santana and Ortiz, right? Uh, I believe so. But anyways, they're making them re- recall that, and they're like. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, we shouldn't really be mad at y'all. We should be mad at them, the guys that eliminated us and mocked us doing the whole uh, Young Bucks pose. Mm-hmm. So they pretty much, like, turned the whole argument around on them and then said, you know, throw a brother too sweet while you're at it. <laughs> and yeah. I love this about about what they're doing with the too sweet in the backstage because – they're making it sound like they're like smoking. They're like they're smizzing some whiz in the back. Like, hey, 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 it's too sweet me real quick, bro. He's like, yeah, I would, but like Sting's over there. He's like, what? You what are you shamed and like too sweet? And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's just that you know, it's like our thing. You know, it's like a little private thing that we do. <laughs> and then Nick goes in and is like, oh, I'll do it anyway. And he's like, just bumps him real quick. <laughs> it's it's hilarious the angle that they take with the too sweet and what they're mm-hmm. what they are doing with the Bullet Club. I hope it just keeps going. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. We'll definitely talk about that shit later, too. But yeah. um, the one thing I hated about this is that they could have interjected a match with Proud and Powerful in a much better and much more story-oriented way that could have helped benefit both the Inner Circle and the Bucks, you know, for that matter. But, yeah, they, they didn't do that. They just said, okay, you know how you're going to give them a match? Well, then what was the point of the f- fucking battle royal and the storyline between that? Because if that's the case, then it's like, you know, you could have gone a whole go back, different go way. Back a little, go back a little further. What was the point of the inner circle tag team triple threat? That to too. just have three or yeah, two members of or four members of the inner circle end up in a battle royal anyway. Yeah. All, but then all of that, but then it's like if Jericho and M- MJF are supposed to be the tag team of of the inner circle, why the fuck is Santana and Ortiz getting title shots when technically they're not supposed to be a tag team? True. Like the continuity of that is a little weird, but it is. It's whatever. And again, that's the stuff that we criticize. We <laughs> like it. We like everything that's going on, but you can't you can't just ignore that shit and be like, oh, you know, yeah, it's okay, it's all story. We got it. No, it don't work out like that because there's plot holes in the shit. But this is not how it works, Uncle Dave. <laughs> but again, they don't pay us for this shit, so you know, hey, you know, but know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Pac and Ryan Hollywood Hunk Nimeth. <laughs> I like that for a name, to be honest. I, I like it too. I just clearly there had to be some backstage stuff that that has happened. I think Ziggs probably called up and was like, "Yo, my brother is trying to really get into wrestling, or he's really trying to get like just he 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 needs some type of push." And this is what happened because I don't see unless he's been on dark. And I haven't seen it, but yeah, I just I don't I don't know what this push because it's completely out of nowhere because he's getting matches left and right with names. So yeah, what's happening. I honestly wish I knew because 
he's getting more attention right now than Scorpio Sky is, and that's 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 bugging me. Like I, I'm hoping that Sky is like doing something somewhere personally or something because I have not seen him. Yeah, because maybe maybe they have him sidelined so he can come back more in a singles way. I I'd be fine with that too. I mean, I'm 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 never gonna hate on time away for the right reasons. But right. in this instance, I would hate for people to be wasted. Like Abaddon being gone, that's a good thing. <laughs> Scorpio Sky being gone is yeah, a bad, bad thing because there's so much momentum and so many things you can do with Scorpio Sky outside of a fucking title picture. And again, going to talk more about that whole aspect of things when we talk about the main event. But but yeah, so but either way, back to this match, which was nothing much <clears throat> glorified squash. I'm going to give my quick hot take. I don't know if it's a hot take, but I think officially Pac or the bastard. I can't say it like Justin Roberts, but <laughs> Pac is a bastard. <laughs> Might be my favorite wrestler in AEW. I'm going to just drop that right there. Story. Rightfully uh, so. He might be my number one favorite wrestler in AEW at the moment. And the reason that I would have to agree is because he emits that that Chris Benoit energy. Because Ooh. when he's in the ring, it's like whether he's a face or heel, it doesn't matter. That he keeps that same energy. Right. It's like it's 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 all about the objective. My objective is to win this match. That's what I'm going to do by any means necessary. It's going to happen, and he carries that. So it's just like, yeah, he's he's somebody who is definitely going to be a a world champion. When I don't know, but it's 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 coming, and it's going to be deserved for sure. So, yeah, but yeah. obviously, Pac went over. No surprise there. No, I'm a, I'm a, I, since I haven't updated y'all in a while, but uh, Bianca was out there talking to Sasha, and Naya and Shayna came, and it led to a fight, and uh, they tripped up Naya, and she, quote unquote, fell on her hole again. But she didn't say it. She didn't say it, but she did sort of similar spot. So I don't know if they're going to try to make Bianca and Sasha a temporary tag team to go against uh, Nia and Shayna. This, but, is, this is two things. But, yeah, to give y'all a quick update. Oh, also, too, Seth Rollins made his return. He yeah. tried to do his address the locker room thing. And they're all they all walked out on him mid-speech, and he didn't know they left. <laughs> And the only person left was Cesaro. And Cesaro walked out and Seth Rollins jumped Cesaro. So is he so still doing the Messiah be... gimmick? Yeah, yeah. He's still doing the Messiah gimmick. So, so we might get a Seth Rollins and Cesaro yeah. feud coming. But uh, that's been the update on SmackDown so far. Uh, Street Profits beat Alpha Academy. Uh, Big E gave an open challenge to Shinsuke. But... Uh, Cruz interfered, but yeah, back to AEW. I, I do, I do like how, like the way that you said that and built it up. Like the way that it sounds, sounds good. Sounds like it could be entertaining. As far as on paper, now the, the execution, yeah. But but yeah, uh, one thing that that WWE does, and again, this is straight criticism, again, y'all are like a kid who hears a joke for the first time and tells that joke over and over and over and over until it gets fucking old. This whole whole thing, <laughs> something that just fucking happened, just because it got traction doesn't mean you need to continuously bring it up or make it a thing, basically be like, oh, you know what? We got to strike while the iron's hot. No. So, did you know? I listened to Cornette's other podcast, The Drive Through, 
And one of the people asked the question, do you <laughs> think they can make merch out of this? Out of the whole thing? Yeah. Please or do you don't. think WWE is just going to nip it right Please there and there? don't try and make money off of this whole thing. That Funny coincidences are funny coincidences. Yeah. Like you, don't, you don't need... I let the internet run its course on that and be done with it. Yeah, my, my, my thing is is the fact that you need to be able to keep that same energy with everything that you do. If you sat there and thought, oh, it's a bad thing, let's take it off of let's let's censor it on YouTube. That means you never wanted it to begin with. So it's like, why would you then wait for it to get popularity and be like, oh, you know what? Let's capitalize off on this. That's not keeping the same energy. That's basically showing how two-faced you are as a company and with your talent. Exactly. You only want something when it gains traction. You don't believe that that's not you believing in something. You know, you only want it because it seems popular to somebody else. And it's something that you can actually gain something out of. That's it, you know what, Andrew Yang, you're right. <laughs> they are fucking greedy. Fucking greedy. But they, I digress. Now now, as, as far as the Sasha and Bianca thing, they should be nowhere near those tag titles. Matter of fact, any women's champion should not be near any tag titles at this point because they they basically just watered down the achievement of a woman of a, a previous women's champion or a woman a current woman's mm-hmm. champion in the tag titles. It just no. Be and the one thing I don't want, I don't want them again to rehash something of the past because you had. Shawn Michaels and John Cena win the, the Raw Tag Titles and then go into um, WrestleMania 23. And you had them as tag champions go into a match where they wrestled each other for the world champion and it's the world championship. Don't need that. Yeah. Don't only thing we need from that is 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 like is the is a match is akin to what we got because that John Cena, Shawn Michaels three, good fucking match because that was on Raw. That match was better than it was on WrestleMania. Match was a good fucking match. I digress. Not important, but anyway, on to some, <clears throat> some some bullshit that really doesn't matter. This squash match between Pac and Ryan Nemeth. Pac won. Leave it at that. Uh, yeah. Then- then we had something that proved my point about the acclaim. And that's the fact that the acclaim is one hell of a team with a great look. And they don't need to be doing this rapper gimmick at all. Because no. to be- he had a name for the acclaim, but I don't remember what it was. Of course he did. <laughs> was it a I good can't name? remember what he called him. Huh? Was, it, was it good or bad? I mean, of course, you know, in Cornette's world, it's going to be a negative. Mm. But I forgot what he called him. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Um, so, and there, there, there's another thing to this, too. And this is what I like about AEW with not only, I mean, shit, their tag teams and their, their heels and faith. I mean, their, their basic non-heel and non-face dynamic. It's the fact that you can still have heels and faces go up against each other and still have that heel heel dynamic where they're both trying to do anything necessary, anything by any means necessary to get the win over. And that's exactly what happened here with the acclaim versus MJF and Jericho. And it was just two teams trying to win rather than them just being the type says, oh, you know what? It's a face. Let me go ahead and just scheme so I can get over because I know they're not going to do the same thing. No, it was like, okay, well, I'm going to try some dirty tricks. You're going to try some dirty tricks. We're going to wrestle. Simple as that. There was n- nothing to this match outside of them showing their talent because everything that was worth watching happened after the match. That's not to say the match was bad. Just to me, as I'm watching this, I still couldn't get the shit out of my mind that happened earlier with Sam and MJF because I'm like, oh, the other shoe's going to drop. What the fuck's going to happen? So I couldn't get my mind off of that. So when the match was going on, I was like, good match, but I, I kind of want to see how this is going to progress. And 
it was at this spot here for me that I was just wondering why the hell didn't Sammy just immediately show the footage of like the backstage? Like you had a cameraman stay back for your talk with MJF for, to begin with. So yeah, why not just throw that up on the screen and be like, you want to know what's going on, Chris here? Look, <laughs> <laughs> And that, that also goes to my point on why I believe that, again, this is still like him with MJF and Sammy working together. But Sammy comes out, Chris sounding like a, uh, like a fucking uh, retail uh, supervisor. It's like, oh, you're like, you're 30, you're 30 minutes late. Like, right. what are you <laughs> um, and, of course, Sammy being true to his word. Looks at Chris and said, I told you, I told you, I think he said December 9th. Yep. If something else is pulled, I'm done. It's like, so I'm done. I'm out of the inner circle. And I was like, dope shit. If I didn't have the other shit in, my, in the back of my mind, where it was like, yo, <laughs> I, I know him and MJF are working together at some point. But if this was one of those things where it's like, I was still on the whole idea of, yo, Sammy's going to be a face moving forward. I would have been like, yo, this is a this is a dope moment for him. But he leaves, and that's that. Now, the one thing that kept me believing that this is whole MJF and Sammy like scheme is the fact that as he's leaving and um Alex Marvez tried to stop him, he said, I just need to be away from this place, which means he's going to be gone for some time and that's going to take his mind, take everybody, take him out of everybody else's mind. And I believe yeah. what's going to happen is I guess when the other shoe drops for like the whole culmination of this new inner circle, when they finally turn on Jericho, I feel like Sammy's going to come back and then be mm -hmm. like quote unquote saving grace and then turn his back on Jericho and then actually show that he's been in it in cahoots with MJF the whole time. Well, I don't know if y'all also heard the rumor, but apparently in March, they're supposed to move locations. What, from Jacksonville? Yeah, they were supposed to move from Daly's place, and I think they were supposed to do something in Tampa? Hmm. Okay. Starting when? So, what's up? Starting when? I think like sometime in March. I think, I think it might have been either with Revolution or after Revolution. So... Maybe uh, Sam, maybe that might be Sammy's hiatus. We away from this place. He doesn't show back up to they switch locations. Hmm. Maybe that, and you know what? That would make sense. Be like, yo, I, I just need to get away from this place. Like, yeah. this place. Quite literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm. I look. I'd be all all fucking for it. But that's a. Uh, that's still to be continued. I like, I like how this is unfolding. It's it's giving us a slow burn. And the nuggets that they're dropping keep me questioning what the fuck is going to happen. So, but I mean, we all ultimately know that Jericho is going to, you know, be the the one who gets the uh the shorten of the straw out of this whole deal. So um yeah. now up to something else that I just I guess I have a love hate relationship for, and that's this damn women's world championship elimination tournament. I, <laughs> I, 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 I look, I want this to be like some dope shit, but the setup for it is just not what it needs to be like at all. Because I think this needs to be all good. I know I just, I just want it to be like all AEW talent, like because mm. it's just. Like I talked about before, it's like you keep throwing these names in here that because AM uh, AEW is still like in its quote unquote infancy. If you, I mean, if you want to call it that, so there's mm -hmm. still that's either learning about yeah. them, you're still getting familiar with the current roster. So with them bringing in all these unfamiliar names that aren't going to be around, it's like why are you making why are you making the situation more complicated than it needs to be? But yeah, that's that's my thing on that on on why i hate that because 
they could be doing it's, this better. It's too much of a slow burn for me for this women's championship thing. Mm-hmm. Like, because what have they maybe had one or two matches on the Japan side already? Uh, and we've had our first women's match tonight. Oh, I mean, not did tonight, you, Wednesday. Well, did you see that come Monday, all of the Japan women matches are happening Monday on YouTube? I don't know if y'all saw that graphic. Or maybe all it might have been something. All of, not the whole thing, but the right. qualifier. Right. All the first round stuff. All the first rounds are Monday, I think it Monday at six on YouTube. So yeah. That's um, what the heck? That's that's crazy in itself, too, because if they're just flying through their fucking matches like that. You're basically going to have the American side of it going through and taking the time having these matches, and you're going to have a fully fresh Japanese competitor who's already had their match like weeks <coughs> in advance, ready to have their finals match. So here, I'm trying I, to pull up the uh, like who's all slated for this, and I think on the Japanese side, there's only maybe like three women who has actually been on AEW TV. I know that's uh, Aja Kong, uh, Rio, and I believe... Uh, Rio, Rio's on the American side. Rio is on the American side. She faces uh, Serena Deeb at some point. Oh, that is, yeah, that is... Uh, but uh, you have Amy Sakura, Aja Kong, and um, uh, what is it? Uh, Yumi Zakazui? Z- Z- okay. Yuka, Yuka Sakazaki. Thank you, Yuka. Emi Sakura, Maki Ito, and Aja Kong are each in their own slot. So they have it's four matches in the first in the first round for each side. Yeah. And boy, Jim Cornette had a field day with uh, Maki Ito. She is the god of what was it, piss or some shit? Love, love and piss. Yeah, she is the god of love and piss. And you know what? I'm here for it. But wait, but wait, hold on. Jim Cornette also responded by saying, yeah, you're going to be the god of shit if you stick to this company. And she, and he said she personally sent him a photo of, I guess, a photo shoot where she covered herself in chocolate or something like that. <laughs> and her response is, I'm the god of shit, too. <laughs> well, then, I mean, hey. If you ain't afraid to fire back, by all means. Right. All right. But yeah, so he was having a field day with old Maki Ito. Well, She's, I'm looking at her Twitter alone and I'm like, this woman's amazing. Now, yeah, like some of her tweets and stuff he was reading off and everything. So yeah. She's advertising the her the 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 women's cup to begin with and she's like, let's go kick some asses. And then she puts like a like a cat emoji on there. Now, with the, um, I guess the uh, the beginning of the American side, we have yes. Layla Hirsch and Thunder Rosa, which, uh, again, with these matches going on, I hate the predictability of these matches because you can already tell that Layla Hirsch was not <coughs> going over Thunder Rosa at all. No. So, now, legit Layla Hirsch is pretty legit. And I think she would have benefited from this tournament, especially if you're going to build somebody up. She would have definitely benefited from being in this tournament and actually being in a different fucking bracket because y'all set y'all basically set her up for failure because she reminds me of, I guess you could say like a, if if she gets her charisma up some more or if they Mm. let her have that charisma, she could be like a female Kurt Angle, like, very much so. For real, because she like as she, from, from when I seen her um in the beginning and how she is now, it's like she's kind of grown into her own. Like even now, she's more recognizable. She looks legit. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like an Olympian. Like, yes. like that's almost hitting the nail on the head, in my opinion. Just hitting the that she could be like a Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. Now and- go ahead. 
No, I'm saying that that that's just why like I feel like she would have benefited from being in this tournament a little bit longer so that she can showcase mm. that. I'm looking at the first round on the American side. So we had Layla Hirsch versus Thunder Rosa. Mm -hmm. but then we've got Serena D versus Riho. Then we have Ty Conti versus Nyla Rose. And then finally, Britt Baker versus Anna J. And see, and that's... Honestly, if you would have swapped Nyla Rose with Layla Hirsch, then you would have had a better looking bracket already. Oh, I do like that matchup. Yeah, you if you would have had Ty Conti versus Layla Hirsch and then Nyla Rose versus Thunder Rosa, I'd have been like sitting. I'd have been like, all right, I honestly don't know who might win this. Yeah. Yeah. God damn it. Pay me, Bucks. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> See, and but and, and, and again, you hearing that, it's like you already know that all those matches are predictable. Anna Jay's gonna suffer. Um, Ty Conti's finna suffer, which oh, shit. which fucking sucks. Job order. I know, right? The only yeah. unpredictable match is Serena Deeb and Rio. Yeah, that's the only unpredictable one. It was champion yeah. versus former champion. Yeah, and Rio's been gone this whole fucking time, so. You can have the argument say, okay, well, you know what? She can't really lose because she's just now coming back. So you wouldn't serve her a loss on her day, on her re debut, basically. So, yeah. yeah. But again, uh, this Layla Hirsch match with Thunder Rosa was a good match. Uh, I liked it, which proved my point as to why they really should have redone these brackets and put Layla Hirsch in a better position to where she can showcase herself even more. Even if she didn't go all the way in this tournament, at least make it to what the semifinals. Right. Just to, you know, get some type of like recognition even more, but I'm going to personally reiterate what I said before. They really did this tournament a disservice with the Japan side. Like to not even showcase it or what to not even showcase it. I mean, it's not on TV at least. I mean, they're going to well, showcase it, but... Hey, like before, Jaeger, you're froze on my screen. But... There you go. Uh, reason why I say that, because... Excuse me. It's kind of like what Cornette has said, and y'all kind of hinted it either. There's only three women on that Japan side we've seen. Mm -hmm. The other five, unless you follow that wrestling, you're not going to know the other five. True. Yeah. So, it would have probably been better if they got those three women maybe to come to America. I don't know if they could or not, but there's so many women that could have been featured. Hell, if they wanted to, Jade and Velvet up oh, Jade and uh, Red Velvet could have been in that tournament. That's true. Yeah. You know, they had enough women to fill in 16 spots. Penelope Ford is nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. uh, Big Swole is not even in the tournament. Oh, uh, Big Swole's been in, gone completely. Yeah, so they they could have. I mean, hell, uh, Eva Lee and Diamante could have been in the tournament. So they had enough women to not have <laughs> to feature a Japan side. You just well, listed again, six women right there. I mean, all we need is two see? more. Yeah. Oh, they got so, it. Yeah. So I don't I don't get why hell Abaddon. Uh, no. You know what? Throw in Abaddon and Sheeta, and then yeah, you have a whole American women's tournament right there. But yeah, okay. so like I said, they, there was no need to technically have a Japan side <laughs> because it devalues the tournament a little bit. Well, granted, granted I understand the champion is Jap uh, uh, Japanese, but eh. but that that's my problem because there to me there's no reason to have this tournament because you haven't given me any reason or indicator why this tournament is important because you haven't had your champion. On TV, you haven't showed the importance of your women's championship. So how am I supposed to believe, okay, 
they really about to go balls to the wall with this tournament because this is the prize to have. You know, for my for my uh, MMA fans, I don't know how many people. I don't know if y'all two gentlemen are MMA guys, but come on, back now. when back when uh, Demetrius Johnson, shouts out to Mighty Mouse, back when he was in the UFC, he ran through that division twice before he finally lost the belt. So I can see if it was like that with Sheeta. I can see if Sheeta just ran through the roster to where it was like, fam, who y'all want me to fight next? I yeah. didn't beat them all. But this is just like, because the thing is, is that for, for such this grand of tournament, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it will honestly have to guarantee the winner of this tournament must going to win the title. And I believe that's that's the case. Yeah, I believe that whoever wins this is going to win that title. That being said, who do you see winning? At it's going to be somebody on the American side, and it's either going to be Riho or um, who else you said was on the American side again? So we've got Britt yeah, Britt Baker, Anna J, Ty Conti, Nala Rose. Serena Deeb, Riho, and the winner from last week, Thunder Rosa. So who would Thunder Rosa fight the winner of? She would fight the winner of Serena Deeb versus Riho. It's definitely going to be Riho versus Serena Deeb. I mean, Riho versus Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. And I can see Brick Baker still fucking with Thunder Rosa, which makes Riho win and Thunder Rosa possibly doing the same thing. So, because yeah. their feud isn't done, because even Thunder Rosa had said their feud wasn't done. Well, that's so, the, that was the thing prior to Thunder Rosa's match that night was she cut a little promo saying she's got three priorities right now. Number mm -hmm. one, number one, the uh, AEW championship. Number two, reclaiming her NWA championship. Which I and number three, huh? I thought that was a dope promo. It was. It right? was. It was a great promo. And then number three, getting a piece of Britt Baker's ass. <laughs> yeah, because she can get her big nose out of her business. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was but, a good But either I have my choice of three women winning. Either Riho, Thunder Rosa, or maybe Britt Baker. One of those three are going to win. I hope it's Thunder Rosa. Because she's taken L's a few too many times for me. So one of those three women are going to win, in my opinion. The problem is, like I said, I hope it's a situation where whoever wins this title, I mean, title tournament, becomes mm -hmm. champion. Because then it's just like, what was Why the, the fuck? Like you just really just stretching Sheeta's title reign. Yeah. Just because, because the because I mean. It seems like from this point of from this point, the winner is not fighting uh Sheeta at Revolution. Yeah, they're not. So Well, hold on. How many more when is Revolution? March seventh. So where does that put us? March seventh? Mm-hmm. You mean Wait, that's a Sunday. Okay, six? then six. Then. Yeah, six. So you got three more. You got four more. Yeah, yeah. You got four more weeks. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Three more. Three more shows. Yeah, you got three more shows up until that March sixth. So you're probably going to get froze. <laughs> uh oh, it did. Hello. We good but now. I'll be back here. Well, you're fine, but Dizzle. Dizzle did freeze. Okay. Because I'm frozen. I don't see you frozen. You're moving around. No, oh, because the thing on this bottom has frozen too. But yeah, but as long as I can still hear the audio. But uh, yeah, so. So you're going to have. We have three weeks. weeks. If they want to do it right, I say they do two of these women's qualifier matches. And well, no, they can't even complete this thing. In time for a revolution. There's no way. There's there's mainly no way. Because that, mainly because of that Japan side. Yeah. 
So I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, again, I personally don't think this needs to happen because this 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 whole there there's no importance. This uh-uh. women's championship is not fucking important because you're not even you're not even showing like the the women's champion is has not been on TV. You haven't shown me like what she even thinks about this fucking tournament. This is like, oh okay, well I guess I'm defending against whoever. Two two Sheeta's defense. She is in Japan right now producing this shit. And and that that's cool. But I I just need like some vignette or promo of some sort that just shows like, yo, this is what these women are fighting for. You just basically announce, yo. Tournament number one. Tournament. She just going to Japan. Japan's cool. <laughs> like and 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 I get the the agenda behind it. You know they they want to showcase more Japan stars, and that's cool. I'm all for that. But there's a better way the shit can be done. Yo, that's my thing. But either way, I could care less. Whoever wins, I just hope that they take that title and then they actually revitalize it whether it be because it, it either has to be a tweener or a fucking heel because i need somebody because it's 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 to me it's either got to be thunder rosa or Britt baker yeah so, real definitely doesn't need it right now um unless like she's got like a whole complete attitude change and she's not as uh innocent as she looks rightly yeah yeah so i mean but we'll see we will uh, now we got the main event. There were some promos. Mox dropped a bomb ass promo, which I'm glad As that usual. he got here. Um, I don't so, get it. I really <laughs> just don't get it. What? I don't get how I love a person's promos, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like the in ring. I don't get it. I mean, I don't get it. you want Mox to be a wrestler, and honestly. All his best shit comes when he's out of the ring. And, uh, oh, Cornette updated his name. It's not Stone Cold Cosplay. I think he actually calls him Stone Cold Moxley now. Oh. He's yeah, he actually calls him Stone Cold he Moxley. He gives him a name. He actually uses yeah. his name. <laughs> All, right. All right. I'm down with it. Um, but, yeah, I just don't get it. Like, I don't get why. But, like I said, this is how I felt when he was Dean Ambrose, even with the Shield. Yeah. It was just something about the wrestling aspect that I did not like. I don't <laughs> know what it is. What again? Yeah, he he de- he definitely he definitely killed killed the promo as as always. Mm-hmm. And it's now now for sure for sure flaunting that uh, uh, New Japan was it North American U US the US yeah I US up. Um, yeah the North uh, the U the New Japan U.S. title, god damn it! Um, yeah, he's he's now flaunting around, which I'm glad because it's more so solidifying the fact that this is a legit thing, like this is a legit partnership. So, yeah. uh, and then of course Kenny had had his little <laughs> had his little interview promo. Deal. All right, so before we before we continue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cornette says something. Once again, I know we're talking about him a lot, but he says something, and I want to get y'all's opinions on it mm. because he was mentioning about how when Kenta showed up last week, because that's what the episode was about them reviewing last week's episode. So, in his opinion, he's saying this partnership doesn't matter unless you're just into it. Unless you're just really into New Japan and you're really into AEW. He was saying that this partnership is not going to bring in new fans, quote unquote. That nobody's going to turn on, <clears throat> nobody's going to turn the TV and see Tanahashi, Okada, or even Kenta and be like, ooh, let me stick around and see what this is. That whoever is already watching this is already watching it. They're not going to gain nobody new from this partnership. So ultimately, he's saying 
I guess in a sense, saying it without saying it, why do it? Maybe, I don't know. But yeah. So thoughts on the fact that does this partnership matter? I mean, I I agree with what he's saying. I'm not gonna say mm-hmm. that that he's wrong because it's it's the same thing. I mean, with me, I mean, if you tell me, you know, there's a whole bunch of women's wrestlers here, WWE, NXT, AEW, and they're good, but then you have a whole nother promotion of stardom out there. I'm not really going to care much to go look at it because I'm, I, I'm, I like what I'm familiar with. You know, I, I like what I recognize. I don't want to have to go through and learn a whole new deal. Um, so he's right in that respect where it's not, people are not going to go out of their way to look at something unless it makes that impact or unless it, it gets that impression on people like, yo, okay, I'm, I'm intrigued. What the fuck is going on over there that I'm not seeing now? Mm-hmm. At the same time, I don't think that that's the objective. I don't think that that their objective is to gain new fans right now. I think the primary objective right now is to give back to the fans who have been loyal, who have built, who basically they're building the backs on this company of all the fans who have been around since, you know, Bullet Club, ROH, New Japan, uh, All In, All Out, all that. Like, it's basically giving back to the fans. Yo, if the next if the next time they do it is all that, hopefully they get the rights from Nickelodeon. Boy, <laughs> I would be there. That'll you know that'll what? be the day that they get New Day to to debut. Oh, <laughs> my God. but um, but hold on, hold on, you can't you can't can't just take those rights from Nickelodeon without including some slime at some point. Oh well, yeah, that, that too. That, that's when you got to get Gronk to come in. Oh no, 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 no. Let let him go keep his Super Bowl rings that he's making right now. You're talking about they already got their resident rapper that's gonna come back. It's gonna be Snoop. It's always gonna be Snoop. Snoop is always gonna be the one. And he's gonna make up for that splash. He did Snoop Snoop pulling a double contract with WWE and AEW. Right? I think Snoop's in the Hall of Fame on in in WWE now that I think about it. Yeah, he is. He got he, yeah, yeah. He got inducted a couple of years back. Celebrity what? wing. Yeah, yeah. Snoop was in the WWE Hall of Fame, along with with uh, former President Donald Trump. Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh anyway, <laughs> but um, this uh, is- uh, Jaeger, your thoughts <laughs> with the. On, on what? What I said about Cornette saying about with the partnership and all of that. Oh, that. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I was about to say about Trump being in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you don't want him. <laughs> but, uh, um, about Cornette, he's kind of got a point. I mm-hmm. think if anything, this will benefit New Japan more so than AEW. Yeah. Um, I mean, New Japan's already got a, a long-standing partnership with ROH and what was it CMLL, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this will just really broaden their audience and, like, especially and introduce a uh, New Japan Strong more, which has been going on since what, like, last August. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only been going on since last August. Dude, New Japan Strong is like still young. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, yeah. So, hey, if this turns more heads on New Japan and vice versa, then awesome. But he's kind of got a point that if you're an AEW guy and you're here and you see Kenta show up, it's like you you should probably already know who Kenta is. Yeah. That's true. But, <clears throat> but aside from that, I mean, we can only see how it goes. Yeah. And. And I, and I think with with matches like this, this would give them more because I think what's going to happen is that shit like this is going to end up bleeding over into the other companies in some way, shape, or form. So if you are interested in this, you're going to want to check it out. So it's going they're they're gonna they're gonna hook a few people here and there. They're not gonna hook those massive numbers that Jim Cornette is thinking that they're not gonna hit. Which of course I agree, yeah. with, but. Again, that's to me. That's not the objective. The objective is to give back to the fans who, who started this whole thing, and then to two 
just like Jaeger said, to get uh, to get the Americans familiar with New Japan, because I, I believe that there's that they're still going to transition over to America with putting a show or something over here anyway. So that's the best way to segue into it to where, OK, I'm familiar yeah. with this. Mox is going to be over there. You got a lot of other people that's been over there that's going to be over there, too. So, yeah, absolutely. But with this match, I enjoy yeah, because it's one of Moxley's strong suits. Can I ask y'all one question? Mm-hmm. Uh oh, is Lance Archer like Captain Savaho or something? Because <laughs> how does Lance Archer always get caught up in situations? He got caught up with the whole Butcher Blade in the Death Triangle. He's now caught up in this because. Like, my um, God, Mox and Archer have a bit of history in New Japan as well. That I know. I've seen. I saw their last <laughs> match when Mox won the title from him. I saw yeah. that match. So I think that's really why Archer's involved in this is because he has such a tie-in between Mox and Kenta and the championship. Okay. I However, it did feel random that. Archer is. I mean, uh, it had that not been the case, yeah, it would feel out of place. It it does seem random, yes. But what I think, and it it it, it kind of it was hinted at a little bit to me during this match, and that's the fact that I think that Archer is Kenny's next challenger for that title. Mm. Okay. Um, because. Yeah. What happened in the beginning of the match, like before the match started, when everybody was in the ring and when commentary was was pointing out the fact that three of the four of these guys are have all held the, the New Japan U.S. title. Yeah. Uh, Archer looked at Kenny and I believe he mouthed, I want that. Like uh, the, referring to the title. So. Right. I think that with the feud between Mox and Kenta going on. Wait, Kenny held the U.S. title? Yeah, he was the first. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. You're right. Okay. Um, Man, come the 26th, if Kenta wins it, then all four of those guys were champs. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, with, with Mox going against Kenta being mixed up with that whole situation at, mm-hmm. along with the club, and now with Archer integrating himself into the mix, it only makes sense that Archer would be the suitable contender to go up against Kenny because Kenny doesn't have a contender at the moment. And I believe Archer is ranked, possibly. I believe. Um, but even if he's not, it still makes sense for uh, for him because of the way that this match ended. With uh, with the good brothers getting in the mix, yeah, and assisting Kenny with the win. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's not something that's going to be just over like that. I think that it's going to be something that continues on, and I think that I believe come next week or the week after, we may start seeing that come to fruition where Archer comes in and then wants the challenge for the title. Because one thing was made very clear Kenny didn't get Archer up on his own. He had no, he did not. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I believe that may be a talking point to where it's like, okay, well, you couldn't get me up, so I don't think you can beat me because you can't beat me without the one wing angel. If you can't get me up, you can't beat me. So mm-hmm. that Ooh. would be a good way to present that and then to have him contend for that. And then, of course, you're going to have Kenny actually get him up and then do the one wing angel, and then that's that. But I digress. Um, or he introduces a new move or some shit. Or that. Or that. Because we already know that the, all, that 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 kick out to the one wing angels is designated to one person. Yep. So, <laughs> it's the hangman. We'll, 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 we'll see what happens with that. Um, um, well, I guess since we're on it, how do y'all feel about Jay White's photo of that bullet club, which was Jay White, Ghetto, Gorillas of Destiny, and um, I forgot who the other guy was. You're talking about um, Ishimori? 
No, it was another manager. It was somebody else. Hold on. Oh, 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 um, uh, Jono, right? I think the so. Guy that, the guy that follows evil around. Yeah. So it was only just five of them in the photo. Interesting. And yeah. he posted that picture saying, you know, our era, Bullet Club, this, and the other. And, of course, our favorite Bullet Club member, Tawatanga, he reposted it and said, this is the only one that matters. Yikes. So where does that put Kenta, Chase Owens, El Fantasmo, Evil, and Bad Luck Fale, and the Tokyo Pimp? So what about those seven guys? And technically Kenta, if I ain't, if I ain't say Kenta. But what about those seven? I I want to say that it's it's more of a of a context thing. I, I'm hoping yeah. I'm hoping that it's just a context thing. Yeah. Just, that's the picture that they use because it's the most recent thing. Because I think yeah. that one was from Strong. See, so like Fale is still stuck at home, right? Yeah, he's yeah he's he's he's, he's making TikTok videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like for real. Like, I mean, he's making dope I mean, TikTok videos. I mean, hopefully oh, okay. we're Tokyo Latina, but. I mean, that's <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, oh yeah, you can't you can't forget about the bunny, the the the, the original bunny, by the way. <laughs> right. Um. With that being said, is Bullet Club fine? <laughs> <laughs> Bullet, Bullet Club is fine. Bullet Club is trying to remember who Bullet Club is, I guess, right now. <laughs> Because, yeah. because I mean, over here, I mean, it looks like Bullet Club is fine in Japan, but obviously there's some shade being thrown there. It here is. in the U.S., it looks like Bullet Club is trying to be Bullet Club, but they're not getting the acknowledgement that they are Bullet Club. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. I don't, I, I'm intrigued, but I'm confused at the same time because. I, I I love New Japan Bullet Club. Love yes. it. I love the dynamic that they have. I love what Jay White stands for as far as being a leader and introducing, like, I guess that that ruthlessness, if if you will. I just wish he was more ruthless at times. Oh, I forgot about Ishimori. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's all, I didn't. Uh, but yeah, man, it's I I I, I feel like Whatever's going on, we don't even know. Like, even at whatever we speculated, I still think we are all 100% wrong. And I think that they're right. going to put something over on us where we're just like, what the fuck? Well, we'll only know if Tomatonga and Kenny Omega hug it out. <laughs> if it leads to they all come together and Tama and Kenny hug it out, whatever, then it's going to be like, wow. Good fucking yeah. job, guys. Good fucking job. I just want to see like a 12 man too sweet explosion. That's all that's all I want to see. The world will implode. <laughs> right. The world will implode. <laughs> and Rocky was kind of alluding to that. Like, well, he wasn't alluding to a union like that, but he was just like, Well, who knows? I mean, you got you just had Kenta show up. I mean, who knows? Like, if things progress well with this whole COVID thing, you may see the God show up. You may see Jay White show up. Well, we can only yeah, we can only speculate right now with world events being as they are. Yeah, and I and once uh, once Kenta and Mox have their match, once Revolution is over, I think we're gonna start to see like the next chapter in this whole bullet club story and yeah. i think it's going to start to introduce like that that bridge that that we now have between new japan and AEW to where you're going to start to see some type of back and forth whether it be AEW to there or new japan to AEW. so yeah yeah i'm, I'm hoping for something something good and for uh, Tama to give uh, give the best RKO to somebody. <laughs> oh man, we'll see. I want. <laughs> not gonna lie, I kind of want to see Tama like hug Kenny and then give him that gun stun. It. <sighs> he does it so well, man. 
does. It's like it's like he floats in the fucking air. It's like there, there's 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 like a half a second pause when he's in the air before he drops. It's just like again. <laughs> this makes it look so good. see it. <laughs> but any 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 thoughts on this match before we get any closing thoughts in? Um, it was what I thought it was gonna be, and I'm not mad at it. True. Oh, quick sidebar. I, f- I forgot to say. Uh, once again, last time bringing up Mr. Cornette, he said, "Why put at the time? Why put the Shaq and Jade Cargill versus Red Velvet and Cody match on free TV when you should make people pay for that train wreck?" <laughs> I look. I agree with that logic because I I I don't want to see that match. But <laughs> if you're gonna use Shaq, you might as well get paid for it if you're gonna have to shell out money for Shaq. So yeah. you might as well put him on TNT's time instead of AEW's time, right? So so, but I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. Thoughts on on the on the uh, well, I mean, it was unsanctioned, but the main event. It was it was a pretty good match, man. Like I honestly had no problems with it. Um, I actually liked the addition, that little finale. Right, right. Hold up, let me. Oh, there it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, I did like the little finale with Kenny, like having problem, like having trouble getting Archer up for the one wing. So I did like the Good Brothers showing, like showing up to do that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm ready to see more Bullet Club show up. Whether that be Chase Owens, whether that be Jay White, or anybody in between. I I just don't want it. Well, I I will say this. I think my theory still stands. Granted, it's going to happen later than than expected, but I still think that we're going to get a, um, a Moxley versus Bullet Club, like straight up whole vendetta shit. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think that's still definitely happening. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I guess the question that I do have though, since that one is going to be answered in the immediate future is who wins that match between him and Kenta. Mm. Kenta. <laughs> I, I, I'd rather see Kenta win it, to be honest. And so that honestly, way, uh, that way that'll free Moxley up for when he has to go on paternal leave. That's true. That, <laughs> not to mention, you can even throw in the Good Brothers or Kenny or shit, even another Bullet Club member to come in and and save Kenta, like when he's looking like he's about to get beat. Yeah, and uh, plus that'll help New Japan if things get real again. That way, the title will at least be in Japan. True. Yeah. True. Um, yeah, I, I believe Kent is going to win because that does feed into my theory because I believe that he's going to have help from Bullet yeah. Club to help him win. And that's going to cause Mox to be like, you know, well, well, fuck it. If y'all want to interject, then I'm taking on everybody. So there we go. Um, yeah. And it only makes sense. I mean, he's he's already had he's he's he has the longest reign for the U.S. title, so he doesn't necessarily need it. So he's good. But He's almost 400 days, right? I be, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, so. think, I think he was at 400, I thought. Did he? Shit. I think so. But, but yeah, either way, out of everything that's gone on this week in wrestling news, shows, in between related, any closing thoughts on everything that's gone on this week? Uh, a takeover has never disappointed me, and I don't expect this one to. Damn straight. Ooh. Hit him with it. Let's see. Good shit wrestling. <laughs> like, <laughs> like good good shit this week, pro wrestling. Like, everybody involved, except for, you know, Raw and SmackDown. Min- I would say minus Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> SmackDown was okay. Oh, Daniel Lynn Cesaro won that match. Called it, but that was obvious. See, but if Seth yeah. jumps Cesaro, does he just take his spot? 
No, I mean, no, Cesaro I mean, was in the match. Not, 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 excuse me, excuse me. Do they have a match about his spot? Oh, no. ooh. Because we have know. a week oh. left. We have a week left. I don't know. That would we be might see. interesting if they did that, but I doubt it. Um, but I was going to say, I don't want them to do that to Cesaro, especially when he just got over beating Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Deasley, what's your closing statement? Um, NXT, keep on this this upward trajectory because you're looking like the NXT of old, and I appreciate it, especially – how you're utilizing these two hours. It was magic what you did with one hour. I need you to keep doing that with two hours and make every show feel the way you made it feel this week. Like, thank you. Keep it going. I'm dope. I'm dope. And, and, and keep ever rise off my goddamn TV. Like you have been, that's, what's been the main part about. Oh my God. About NXT has been so good. They showed ever rise for a quick glimpse during a, um, uh, uh oh the, the gyv vignette where they were beating down ever rise and i was like oh i love it so this guy thank you thank you fuck ever rise that's my closing statement so <laughs> scoot <laughs> where can these people that want the smoke and all these oh. other people find you uh like it's been scrolling this whole podcast you can find me <laughs> at the scooter ray on IG, you can bring it the smoketh to me. And depending on the smoke you bring, I might extinguish that shit, fam. Damn. But at the scooter ray, but it's really all about the less stealthy ninjas. All one big word, as you see on the lovely screen, uh, YouTube, IG, Instagram. Hell, we might even start TikTok soon just to put the clips on there too. But less than stealth, the less than stealthy ninjas. One big word. Let's that go. Is one, that is one big word. <laughs> one big word. And of course, Mr. Jaeger Bombastic, you tell all these ladies, and most importantly, you tell Shotzi. Tell Shotzi where she can find you at. Shotzi. We we done done this a few weeks in a row now, but for everybody else listening, if you want a game with me, Xbox, PlayStation, that'd be the name that you always see here, Jaeger Bombastic. You want to you want to talk with me on social medias? You know that's uh, that's your Instagram, that's your that's your Discords, that's your Twitches, that's all that. Hems out winning. Bam bam. Bam, bam. <laughs> and, and and of course, just like Scoot said, as you see, scrolling on the bottom, Lip Dizzle, IG, Twitter, Twitch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If of course you need that positivity shit in your life and you need that kick in the ass that you've been waiting for, lifestyle one up, Twitch. No, well, not Twitch, wow. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, you can catch it, the podcast, on all your lovely platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, so on and so forth until it gets implanted in your head and you just can't stop thinking about it. But, and definitely not on Black Planet and definitely not on uh, wherever else Scoot and Jaeger said that I was on. Farmers only. <laughs> Plenty of fish. My space. <laughs> oh man, when Don Cal said my space, that shit. <laughs> but like always. Wait, 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 wait. Before uh -oh. we tag out. Lip, Jaeger. Too sweet, me bros. Uh, too sweet. <laughs> so as always whether you love it hate it don't forget to rate it comment all your opinions down below if you want the smoke and all that good shit don't forget to motherfucking subscribe and as always you beautiful beautiful mother effers tag out